Hello everybody, I uh, welcome to another stream. How are we doing today? Doing great, I hope. Oh, you know what? It looks like my webcam just went down. So give me one second because I'm sure you all are just aching to see me as well. Hold on, give me one second. I just saw it went down. So let me see what happened here. Give me a, a mental one, one moment, please. To make sure you guys can see me. Alright, let's see. Get this webcam back on up and running here. So uh, we will be continuing our uh, journey along along this, uh, what we've been doing here. So um, it looks like, I don't know what's going on with my webcam. So we might be going to the stream without a webcam. Some weird stuff is going on here. Let me try one thing here. I'm actually going to, oh wait, there, are, we're in. You're in, you got me. All right, back up and running. I don't know what the heck happened there. So we're going to be continuing this journey. Uh, like I said, I've started now to go into my final touches on this cargo ship. And now I want to do a little bit more with this. So it looks like uh, everyone can hear me fine. Uh, I know you guys can see me fine because I can see myself in the streams as well. So it looks like we're all good there. All right. So and everyone's audio is good to go. What's up, John Montgomery? Dan, Randy Dice, how's it going? All right, so Brian, um, I know you said, no, never mind, it's a hard surface uh, modeling stream. Uh, if you had specific questions um, that you want to ask, you can still ask them. You know, we like to go on uh, tangents here. We're, we're big on tangents in my stream. Hence why I have my own little tangent graphic tangent alert graphic so if you have something that you're interested in by all means just fire it in the chat and if it takes us on a journey a little bit at one of the points no biggie we're all good okay so today i want to talk about you know we're getting to again the goal here is i'm trying to make a cargo ship that's kind of like going to be carrying troops and it's going to be carrying some vehicles so this thing is larger than we we really Think, right so I got to start putting things in this as well that will that and that's kind of like my final stage um, is putting little things modeling wise that starts giving this ship a physical scale you know besides just populating a little human character right obviously the easiest thing to do is coming in here and like what's let's do this anyways because we're gonna go into rendering today and then this will just be cool to have this is something that I normally do also when I'm uh, rendering. What's up, 3D art? The Javad. How are you? Okay. So I like to just throw in a, a, a person. It really doesn't matter what it is, right? It's just it's some kind of human element. So I'm just gonna load um, the super super average dude, right? He's super average. T pose, right? So what I'm going to do now is just append him to my cargo ship here, so we can start getting a gauge of really in my mind so you guys can also visually get right so you can see just doing this alone obviously um is going to start giving this ship a scale now you can obviously put this in a render for sure so people get an understanding and a lot of concept artists will do this right they'll concept out a ship or something and they'll just put a little bunch of little people walking around the ship so you get an, an understanding of how really big this ship is so this kind of helps so like this guy's gonna be really tiny, okay? And, and that's being because, here, if I move him to the front here, and then put him over here. Okay, so the very front of my ship, right here, 
is what I call the bridge or the cockpit, right? So this is going to be like a multi-tiered bridge, right? So then this, this guy, if I'm gonna do a multi-tiered cockpit, i.e. bridge here, okay? <laughs> I love it, the robots, 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 robots. So I want him to be a certain size, right? So I think he's still a little bit too big. Like he should be maybe somewhere around that size. That immediately now starts to give like a size here, right? Especially when we render, when we start getting in the render, like this is immediately giving how massive this ship is, right? So I'm just gonna line them up a little bit to the bottom of what I have right now and then just throw them over here. Right, so now <laughs> he's super, super tiny, right? So it just gives you now an understanding of how large I'm going. Like right? he's just a speck now, right? Because that's how big this is. So with this said, right, in my mind here, I'll just put, I'm going to call this guy dude, all right? So that's not going to be enough. When we go to the render state, we got to start thinking about, um, how you're going to be looking at this because when you throw this up on zbrush central or any other website you want to throw it up on you're going to want to be able to have the viewer understand scaling so this is why i will start now going through the process so i've started putting in like my main details i haven't been able to get to the back of the ship yet my schedule got crazy this week um, and last week but i got mostly kind of what I was looking for from the front all the way, I'd say, to the back. I'm starting to work on these these boosters here now um, and finishing off the wings, right? So once I get all the way to the back and start adding everything in here, my final stage modeling-wise will be putting a bunch now of little details because you can see he's so tiny, that's not going to push it enough for me, just putting a dude in here. Right, and when I go, we go make these final renders today. It's not going to be enough for me, All right? And I want to make renders today that I want to focus a lot on just doing like tech specs, right, or tune shading kind of a thing because that's that's what I want, right? Um, and then I want to cover a little bit of how you can actually use live booleans to pop color. Like if I'm just going to render straight out of ZBrush, then I can just keep using live booleans to do some really fun, quick things with the color which can help a lot, start pushing our element a little bit, right? Um, so we, I'm gonna come up with a quick, like in front right now, like a little quick color scheme and show you guys how I would start blocking out the coloring. Um, material selections as well is gonna be important for me because I shouldn't make this whole thing have the same material, theoretically, right? But since I know my end result's gonna be like a tech spec or some kind of, tune look i'm gonna go from that you know i'm gonna change my my lighting here let's let's ch let's set the mood people let's go with a little bit brighter light you know last night i was using oh uh, yeah last night i was using more of like the cool tone but during the day it needs a little bit more okay so <clears throat> now that i've got this guy for a little bit of the scaling let's just first look at what our render is going to do okay so the one thing i'm going to live in a lot right now is our render palette so when i'm rendering i like to dock my render palette because i know i'm going to be using that a lot right and then i could be using things like the lighting a lot but since we're doing something like a tune shade i really don't have to worry about that as much and let's turn off all these other items because let's just not have any distraction right now let's just have straight zbrush document right now with with the ship, okay? So number one, I'm looking to make this kind of like poster size, right? Eventually I would love to maybe even print this out and throw it on my wall or it's gonna be something, whatever I do and wherever I'm going, right? So the number one is what is the resolution size you would want this? So this is important for you if you're gonna wanna start to render, right? So the document, obviously you can see my size of my document it's not very big right now it's 1479 by 1040 and just for the sake of streaming i'm not going to make this go really really big because i don't want to be sitting here you guys want to be sitting here and watch me hit render and then you're like okay waiting for a render 
right? So what's important though to understand, okay? Number one, I wanna now set up my shot, okay? So I'm gonna throw perspective on now so that I have some perspective on this because I'd probably wanna render with some perspective in it for sure, okay? But number two, right now I'm visually seeing where this is, but I don't really see the entire document space, okay? So just for the viewing ability, I'm gonna change my document color to white just so you guys can see better, right? And if I come up here, this is literally the only time I press this button, all right? Is when I'm with you guys and we're talking and we're communicating and finding things out. So zooming out, you can actually see how much more space there is in the document, right? So if you think about this in the terms of, let's, let's come out of edit mode and control N to clear my canvas or IE document. And let's just, just as an example, let's say, okay, I'm gonna wanna make something that the width, I want it to be, let's say 3000 pixels, right? Not 300, 3000 pixels. And then right now I've got the pro button on, so it's gonna keep the height and ratio, right? So it's 3000 pixels by 2110, right? So I'm gonna say, go ahead and resize. And I said, would you like to resize? And I say, yes. So again, we're seeing like, hey, all right, we see the whole document. Let's draw out my ship again, right? And then now there you go. But the thing that you're gonna wanna be aware of, like when you set up your camera angles, and we're gonna go in here, I'm gonna show you guys how you can actually save your cameras, is you're gonna need to zoom out, right? And you can see then how tiny this is, right? In the overall final image, right? Because I don't have a monitor resolution to even show 3000 pixels. My monitor that I'm on can only even do 9, 1920 by 1080. I can't even see 3000 pixels on my monitor. It's not even possible. So this is like, think about the world when you're in like Photoshop or Painter or like a 2D program where you're zooming in and out. That's pretty much what I'm doing. It's a pixel movement going on, right? So this is where then, okay, well I want it to fill. I, if, I'm, if this is my goal to get a final render at a certain size, then I would want something like that, right? I would want to make sure it's actually filling my whole document. So you guys got to make sure you do this for what we're about to start getting into, okay? It's, this is understanding this so that when you go to export the document, your model is not this itty bitty thing compared to the whole document space, right? And if I kick, click this actual, you'll see how zoomed up I actually am. So this is in essence, show me the document at one to one ratio. So right now we're seeing the document at the 3000 pixels by 2100 pixels, right? But the program can't give me all those pixels right now. And like I said, my monitor can't even give me all those pixels. I don't even have a big enough monitor to do that, right? So just for the sake, again, for the sake of, of just for us talking and streaming, I'm just gonna come in here, I'm gonna hit this W size button. I'm gonna say new document. And I said, would you, would you like to save your document? You know, make the saves. I'm going to say no. And now the document has now just actually been reset based upon my monitor and based upon right now what I have in the ZBrush world, right? So if now I redraw this guy out, okay? And then there he is. We're in perspective mode, right? So if I zoom out just a little bit, you see, I don't have to zoom very far and I'm already seeing the whole document. So here I'll go actual. And again, for the sake of you seeing this, let's change my background color. What as you can see is in the document, there's a back swatch and all I'm doing is click and drag and we can make our document background any color we want, right? And now you've got orange. And then again, if I wanna zoom back, you can see I don't need to go very far and I'll see my whole document space because I had that W size button on, okay? So from here on out, I'm just gonna do this. So. I like what we got here. I, I like this view. It's kind of giving me like a kind of a three quarter view, right? Look at things. And I, I like that. So I want to store this now, right? And I, Cause I'm going to play with rendering and I might move things. I might actually do stuff um, right now. And I don't want to do that, right? I want to be able to store this and make sure I can come back to this as well. So in the draw palette, Okay, is gonna be where your camera lives, right? So there is actually two types of perspective cameras inside of ZBrush now, right? So we did in 2018, might've been 2019, I'm trying to remember now. 
we put a universal camera now. So this camera is now going to match to any other cameras from other software that you might use. I.e., I will use maybe some ZBrush with Keyshot to maybe and then compile renders in Photoshop and work with it. For this this uh, stream, we're looking at just straight up ZBrush. Okay. So you've got obviously different focal lengths here that you can play with. So I'm just going to stick with 50. All right. And this right here is what tells the camera to be a universal. If I turn this off, you can see the perspective changed a little bit because now it's using this angle view up here with just the old perspective camera. So by default, we're always gonna have now the universal camera on, okay? And it's by default gonna be set to 50 millimeter, right? So now what I wanna do is I wanna store this, right? I wanna be able to come down and say, I, would li I like this view and I wanna store this. So at the very bottom of this, you have a store cam. So I'm gonna click on that. I'm just gonna put it, call it 34 as in three quarter. Uh, and I'm gonna call it front, okay? And then hit enter. And now you can see that camera view is stored and I have it, okay? So again, we're making like a tech spec thing. So I'm gonna wanna have, you know, not just a three quarter. I want, I'm gonna wanna look at like the top view the bottom view, maybe side views and front and back views for what I'm trying to render. So this is going to be my render that's just a nice three quarter with perspective. Now for perspective off, I'm gonna want a front view of my ship to be rendered out. So I'm just gonna grab this and say, okay, that looks good. I'm gonna go now to my draw palette. Again, down here at the bottom, store camera, okay? And I'm gonna say, you know what? Let's throw perspective on again and say all right let's store camera and I'm gonna say front okay and then I'm gonna turn it around we're gonna look at the back right which I still haven't finished yet I haven't had time to get to that but it's enough to understand what we're doing here all right so then there is that so I'm gonna go to draw again you guys pretty much get this now right store camera it's this isn't anything that's like wow we but you know maybe some of you weren't aware that you could actually store camera views so it's cool to be able to have that right so there you go document uh, in the draw palette store camera i'm just going to store the top view okay and then i'm going to store a bottom view just so i have that as well uh, Let's make this bigger so I'm taking up more document space. That's good enough. Good enough. Okay, and then let's rename that. Well, not rename it, sorry. Let's store that, right, and call that bottom view. Okay, so now what we have here is I've got a list of cameras. So in essence, I've stored multiple cameras. So now I can come back and say, give me the three quarter and I get the three quarter. Give me the front, I get the front. Give me the back, I get the back, right? So now I have this saved. So when I'm starting to do rendering out, things like this, okay? Full option, 3D art, what do you what do you mean by showing full option? You mean how I like, you mean docking this? You mean you want me to dock the draw palette over here? So that you can just see it like that. Is that what you mean? Is that what you're referring to? I'm not sure if that's what you're referring to or not. Okay, so <clears throat> let's start rendering some things out too. And now we've got stored camera, all right? So the first thing now I'm gonna wanna come down here and I wanna start looking at rendering, all right? So if I'm doing something that's like kind of tune shady, right? Let's see what our shadows are doing. So to render out in ZBrush, use Shift R, Okay, which is the shortcut, or you can use this BPR button on the top. That's here in the top right here, top right. Okay, so right below that, you can see there's an S PIX number, and it's at number three. That's actually your render quality, right? So the higher you put that, the better render quality you're going to get. However, with that, you're also going to get longer renders. Okay, and once you turn that S PIX to one, so anything from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven, up to seven, it goes to seven. We're also gonna apply an anti-alias 
to your render when it's complete. Okay, if you have this S Pix down to zero and then you render that out, your render quality is gonna drop a lot and then you don't have any into aliasing. So if you look in the wings, like right there, right, you can see really, really stair stepping, right? So this is just important because if you guys are gonna start playing with your renders, you might be doing a lot render, 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 right? And if you just want for the time of just playing around, you want to start looking at this and going, okay, I want to have this and just be quick rendering. There's no point in rendering with SPIX3 when I'm messing around, right? But we're going to be doing something, so I'm just going to put it back at 3, and then we'll re-render again. Again, clicking this button or hitting Shift-R, and now you can see it's gotten a lot better. Like, there's not as much stair step. See, so when I pull away, you can't even see it, right? I'm using the magnifier right now. That's a pixel magnifier anyways. So I'm using, to turn that on and off, by the way, is Shift M, as in magnificent! Okay. <laughs> I like it. When will ZBrush release? Know what's in my head and make it feature. Yeah, we've been working on that one. It's coming, it's coming. The, uh, it's the, I like to call, make cool art button, right? <laughs> There's just so much to know, and I think in all pieces of software for sure. All right, so we've got a render going now, okay? One thing that I wanna do to kind of maybe make this feel like it's an actual ship is I'm gonna throw on the floor grid, okay? And now that I have this floor grid, right? And so see, I, I, I moved. So no big deal, I come back and I can reselect my camera and I get my three quarter. Now when we go to render now, now that I have a floor grid, I wanna start using this floor grid, okay? I want certain things to start happening with that floor grid. So it's hard to see the floor grid right now. So the floor grid, okay, is <clears throat> something that's also going to live in the draw palette. So right now here you can see floor grid. Uh, the big key slider here too is negative one elevation. So when it's set to that, what ZBrush is doing, if you notice right here, the grid here, I'm gonna turn perspective off for now. So you can see where the grid is and see it's kind of sitting somewhere else in the world, right? And now you can see my guy's actually floating, right? So the reason that is, is because I'm using right now still live booleans, right? I don't have a resulted mesh. And so what the floor grid is going to do is going to say, all right, I'm gonna look at the lowest hanging fruit subtool and snap it automatically to the bottom of that. So this is what a negative one elevation is doing. It's looking at, in my folders right now, there are subtools. So if I turn off my live bullet, you can see, see those cubes? They're actually the lowest sitting fruit in my subtools, right? So I'm gonna show you, Andreas, about the floor grid being infinite in a second here. I'm gonna show you some stuff that you're gonna be able to do, okay? So what I wanna do is, obviously I'm using the dude as my scale, so I'm gonna make him the lowest hanging fruit, right? And now you can see he's actually at the lowest part now, right? And if we turn back on my live booleans, and again, camera-wise, Let's go back and click on, re-click this three quarter, right? I'm rendering it out again, All right? So I'm at a three quarter view. I've now established the lowest fruit. And now you can see the, when I re-render now, and I've re-established what we're doing with this floor grid, you can see some shadow now kicking in, right? And then the beauty of this, of course, is this is now gonna give like, it's a ship, like it's floating, right? Because maybe that's what I want. If you don't want the floor grid to snap, right, then you just change this slider from negative one. So in essence, we can even have some fun with this and let's let's up the floor grid. Let's put it at zero, right? So it's sitting right here. So let me just make it darker for you guys so you can see the floor grid, right? So now you guys should be able to see this floor grid. So what I've done is I've gone to modifiers and frame opacity in my grid. I've just, I've just upped it to one. Yeah, I'm an actual 3D designer. Uh, I do a lot of toy work is a lot of stuff I do on the side, but I'm also in the development team of actually ZBrush as well. So now that we have this, let's re-render this out and then see what we get. Yes. Right. So 
what's happening here is I've got a floor grid, right? And we can use that to chop things. But ZBrush is still remembering my old shadows. So all I have to do is remove the model, right? Move it a little bit. It doesn't matter how much I move it. I'm gonna go back and click on this and then re-render this out, right? You can see the shadows, right? What they're doing, right? They're re-being used and casting on this, right? So that floor grid is an, in essence an establishing point, right? And so you can see now that I've moved and selected a different camera view, that floor grid is infinitely just cutting through the model now. So you can in essence use the floor grid as a way to chop through models. So obviously I don't want that right now. So I'm gonna go negative one, back to negative one. I'm gonna go back to my three quarter view, okay? And I'm gonna re-render this out. Now, number one, I don't like what's going on with the shadows. Um, I wanna play a little bit more with the shadows. Maybe I want also the shadows to go the opposite direction. I don't want the shadows in my scene coming this way. I want them to go maybe this way instead. So that way this all comes into light right because I want all this to be seen in this render okay so what's controlling that shadow is obviously our lights so right now we've got one light in the scene you can see this little dot right here right is the light sitting right above everything right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just move that light over here to the right a little bit all right and then I'll re-render that and now what ZBrush is doing is reanalyzing seeing and recalculating the shadows because I did a light movement. Now you can see the shadows where they're sitting, right? And if I want to have this now, in essence, I want this ship to really look like it's floating, what I need to do then is just switch back to this guy and I just keep dropping this guy, right? As long as I keep dropping this guy, what's gonna happen is I'm going to be establishing the ground in essence right because i'm using him as my ground right so as i look the further and further that this document this this floor grid is getting away from the model that's helping me establish a little ground plane in essence right so we've got that all set up now right so the other thing now since i'm making something that is kind of a tune shaded I want to look at that. I want to do something a little different, okay? Uh, I want to play with my shadows a little bit more, okay? So you can see there's, this is starting to be a bigger gap here in my shadows. And don't worry, we're going to have some fun with the shadows. I think this is, that's a little bit too much of a gap for me. Uh, let's go, yeah, let's go there. All right, and then I'll re-render that out. So since I'm going to be doing some type of tune shade, this is where I'm going to go into my renders now. So I'm gonna come in here, all right? I'm gonna go into my render menu, which I've already docked. Good afternoon, Dougie! So being beneath an object um, in your lighting palette, right? So if you're just gonna move this down here, then you're, you're moving it below, like it's underneath. Now, if you want that light also to kick back, right? So here, I'm gonna switch to a completely different material. Because right now I've got a matte cap material and I don't want to use that because the lighting doesn't update on matte caps. Because with matte cap materials, the lighting's baked into the material. So I'm going to switch to like a basic material. And you can really see now when I move my light, right, you will see the model update. And you can see how far I can push this. Now this is a light that's kind of bouncing, right? But I can also do this kind of stuff in filters. And we're going to spend some time in filtering today and really embrace the filter system. Right now, I just want to kind of have a light that's doing like this, right? Something like this again, and then we'll re-render that, okay? Now, if you want the light to go behind, in essence, be like some kind of rim light. No, I don't like, I don't like that. I like it to come a little more forward. So for the sake of just arguing, I'm gonna turn on another light. So I'm gonna press here to select this swatch, and then I press again to turn on the light. So now I got this dot sitting here, right? I.e. the key light. And now I got this light sitting here, all right? So for you to have a visual, let's light, give this this particular light a color, right? And we'll bump its intestine, intensity. So you can see now it's really blue. So what I wanna do right here is tap on that dot, and then now that becomes, in essence, a rim light. 
So you can see that rim light is now only in certain areas, right? So where do I want that rim light to be? Right, so that's what this is now. This has become some kind of rim light or IE, this is maybe some kind of bouncing light, right? And maybe you wanna play with the coloring. That's gonna come down, of course, to what you wanna do once we start getting in the rendering. Okay, because today I'm not looking to get realistic any type of lighting or anything like that. I just wanna get lights in a, a light in a position so that it's really just controlling my shadows. Okay, so that's good for me, right? I like that. And so, back to the render palette, I'm gonna open up the BPR shadows. And right now, you can see what my shadows are doing, all right? So right now, I've got an angle of zero and a raise of one. I'm just gonna drop the raise down to one because there's no point in me having rays of 12 because really what I'm trying to do is get a shadow that is very like this dark line, right? And I don't want the shadows to be at 100% strength anywhere, especially the floor. It's just maybe a little too dark. So I'll go the F strength here and I can say 0 0.6, right? And then I re-render, okay? And then you can see the shadows down on the floor aren't as just dark and they shouldn't be we shouldn't have necessary pure black shadows however what we're doing i probably want pretty dark shadows so i'm gonna go 0.9 here and then the g, -G, 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 -G strength the g strength is for geometry right so i'm gonna put that at 0.9 so the shadows start lighting lighting up like in here right so i don't like that some of my modeling is starting to get hidden in here so i might want to find a better strength in here to just kind of see there that's coming up now see the shadows aren't as crazy dark on the model i want to make sure this is showing up in my renders i don't want the shadows on my model to be overbearing so on the floor they can be strong i'm cool with that you know maybe i'll go a little bit lighter so <clears throat> this is just a transparency control okay now what i want to do though is i want to change my type of shadow so I'm gonna come here into my render properties. Okay, right now you can see shadows is on. Shadows is always gonna be on by default, okay? So what I wanna do is I actually wanna turn this into flat shadows, okay? Cause I'm trying to do kind of like a flat, more look like a drawing render is my ultimate goal here. Um, Doug E, I would recommend instead of using um, the lighting system, that's in here, the default lighting system, okay? This lighting system, I would use light caps. It's gonna be a lot more powerful and give you things that are probably what you're looking for. Now my Tuesday streams, I've already done two parts, so you can go back and watch those. So it's four hours of me going through more advanced rendering things on my Tuesday stream. So we're gonna do part three, because as you know me, Doug, I ramble. So part three next Tuesday, um, we're gonna go deeper into a little bit custom materials and things like that. And this render, I'm trying to just talk about filtering and then using certain colors, like just hard colors to do things. So I've got flat shadows on, right? And then so now that option is gonna tell ZBrush, hey, make sure the shadows are flat, like, right? So you can see they're very flat now, right? So they, they become more like I drew them in. A little bit okay so now that I have this I want to start thinking about rendering this out and have this look a certain color okay so one thing again that I said was going to be very beneficial beneficial for us okay is being able to use right now what I'm using is live boolean so here's some fun stuff that you guys can start to do right now I've just got a gray scaled right model version of this Okay, with an orange background right now, crazy orange background. But I want to start maybe pop popping some different color on this. Maybe I want to start swapping up materials. Like obviously in the windows here, I want that to be a different material. You know, I'm going to start making a color scheme. So this is something cool that we can start to do. All right, so I'm going to go into the middle portion because it'll it'll be the brightest thing that you guys will be able to see. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click on this portion, which here we'll solo out, which this is the middle portion of my ship, right? That's just design-wise there. That's what I have there. Let's, let's throw a color on this. 
Um, let's do like a, let's do like kind of maybe a little bit of a creamy color, right? Which the thing you guys got to understand right now is the material that I'm using has attributes to it, right? So the material itself, okay, isn't going to show me all my colors correctly. So what I want to do is now set up my material. If I'm trying to make something that's like toon shady look or make something that's, you know, has a little bit of that, okay, I want to make sure it's, that's what I'm starting to look at now. Because if I'm going to start picking colors, I wanted the colors to be picked based upon what my final render is going to end up being, okay? So here, I'm just going to go with a really crazy color right now just for the sake of you guys having a visual key and understanding. So you can see right now, everything becomes green because right now I've got no material... No colors assigned to any of my subtools in this world right now. So I'm going to say, all right, <clears throat> let's go through this. We're going to have green. And in fact, you know, this basic material too, let's just use this across the board for all, all the subtools. Okay. So I'm going to say, let's fill this particular object. Okay. With this material and this color. Okay. So I'm going to go to MRGB which is the M's for material and RGB is obviously color information, RGB. Then I'm gonna go, I wanna fill the color and the material, so I'm gonna go color, fill object, right? So you can see my subtool updating and you can clearly see this subtool is now green. So now if I even just switch my color, you can see everything else is becoming green and you guys should now start seeing some fun stuff that immediately is gonna start happening for us, right? And the cool thing that's happening is there's certain things on that middle piece that aren't even green anymore. And this is this is the fun, this this is where it gets to be fun. Okay? Like let's let's find a crazier green color fill object. Yeah. Okay. Now I say let's find a crazier green, but again, uh, this is all shaded. I don't want all of this. This is not what I'm looking for. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of the draw palette for now. Okay. And I'm going to just quickly dock my material palette. Okay. And right now we've got a basic material selected and that's what I'm using. I'm going to open up my modifiers. Okay. And you can see there's a specularity to this material. Right. So now you can see when I throw a spec on, there's crazy shine happening. Right. That spec though is being clipped by the graph below it. So all I do is I, if I put this at 100 and I tap on that graph, you can start See, upping the specularity. So if you want to make this look super shiny, crazy shiny, then it's this, right? So I'm just gonna, for the sake of just argument, I'm gonna keep it at like this for now, okay? And then we've got a diffuse, right? So I definitely want the diffuse to come through at 100% because then now you really are seeing that green. So in essence, I'm making the material now really push that color. And if I was to throw the ambient all the way to 100, you can see it's just now, whoa, crazy. This is like getting super neon. Because I've now got like 100% specularity. I've got 100% diffuse. I got 100% ambient, right? It's just crazy. It's nuts. So if I turn off my ambient, all the thing now this material is giving me is a diffuse with specular. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this diffuse and click on that. And I'm going to say, hey, you know, let's give this a strength of one. And then like that, we now have got something that looks like a tune shading. So what I've done is I've clipped the graph of the diffuse. I'm saying for a period of time in this material, have literally no material, then all of a sudden, boom, shoot up to 100. So in essence, there's no gradient now in the material. The only two options the material has is zero or one. That's it, right? And depending on where this is sitting in the space to the camera is what's going to make what something's happening. So. I want to be more like Hanna Barbera Johnny Quest style. <laughs> so right here, the step slider comes alive. So you can see I can say two steps, three steps, right? And I now see I'm starting to get variations, right? So you can have different stepping here. Okay, have happening, and then this is going to give what? What is it you're looking for? Okay, I kind of like for this ship. I kind of like the one step thing right now. Okay. It's like, yeah, this is what we're going for. Um, someone just mentioned this is like Borderlands graphic, right? Yeah, this is the kind of, I want that feely, right? So if we re-render now, 
We also now throw our shadows in, and then now you're throwing in your render quality. And then you can see that green is really starting to stand out, right? Because now it's pretty much, there's no any kind of diffuse. All it is is just diffuse. There's no any essence gradient, right? And if I turn off my specularity, right? Now we're getting even more where it's really becoming some kind of flat image, okay? And we're gonna have, we're gonna have to start having some fun with this. So in essence, I need to set my scene up for my goal of the render, right? And you can see how funny my guy is, how tiny he is. Now, what's happening here is I've got this color. And in fact, you know what? I wanna make this ship kind of be more of like a, a nice blue. Uh, let's see, kind of blue that I'm going for. Let's play with this a little bit more. You know, I want this to have that color, color fill object, right? That's kind of the blue I want to go for, something like that. And then I re-render, and then now this is what I have, right? So what I want to do now is this one object's got this blue. I want other things now to have different colors. So what's happening here is I'm in a folder, and I've got other shapes making up. Like, for example, this is making up, okay, this line that I have coming through here, right? So I've got this little scribe lining that I made physically because design-wise, I wanted that, okay? Name it Gabri Blue. Yes, that would be great. I'd love to have a color, right? So <clears throat> going back to the draw, let me go back to my three-quarter view again, okay? So I want to maybe make this be a different color now. All right, so I'm going to say, I don't know, what, what color do we want to do with this? Let's see, what's a nice color blend? Let's make purple, yes. <laughs> right, so you can start now rotating this, and you can see different colors popping into play here, right? And, I'll, and the beauty is, right now I haven't filled this with anything else, right? So that's what I'm getting. Maybe I want to do a white. So I, I kind of like the white. So I'm going to go ahead now and say color fill that with the white and I've got other things here like this one this is what's giving me this big notch here okay so I'm gonna color fill that with the white as well okay so now I've got this sub tools got a blue this sub these two sub tools got the white I go ahead and I re-render everything out okay and then now we're gonna see where my render sitting at and then there you go now I've got something here where I'm starting getting a variation all right, so let's start bringing in a gray tone here just so stuff can really start, you guys can visually start seeing the difference, right? So you can see what's happening here, right? So I don't like these notches having the pure white, so I'm gonna play with maybe a little bit of different color, okay, in here. Let's maybe some kind of yellow. Let's do a crazy bright yellow. And then I'm going to say color, fill the object with that, go back to having kind of like a gray tone, and we'll re-render that out. And you can see, this is the cool thing now about live booleans. All right? So, <clears throat> if I want to start filling things up, okay, in the sense, okay, this gray tone that I have, I kind of like this as like my default looking gray tone throughout the whole thing. Right, and then now I want to start playing more with that and start adding different colors here and there, okay? Thanks, I love the 80s nostalgia, John. Um, to the question about how can I learn from a beginner, uh, come here, boy, or what do you mean, What learn what? Are you talking this, what I'm doing now, the rendering? I don't know if you've just hopped on the stream um, we've been going for about 45 minutes now, but in essence, you could rewatch this stream because it all gets recorded, and I'm doing this from scratch in this stream. So you could rewatch this stream and re-get what I'm, what I'm going to be doing today and redo it with all your pieces. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off these pieces and only show the pieces that I have here. I'm going to go to the plugin here section, and I'm going to go to Subtool Master, and then in here, I'm going to say Fill. And now this is asking, do you want to fill color, material, or both? I'm going to say both and say OK. And what ZBrush is doing now, it's going through all the subtools that are visible 
and filling them all with the material I have selected and with the colors I have selected. So now every single subtool has the gray tone. So no matter what switching color I do, nothing's gonna happen, right? So now what this opens up for me is I wanna start throwing in other shading in here now and other values happening throughout here, okay? So as an example in the, maybe the cockpit part, right? I got this piece and then I got pieces cutting into it, right? So like here's a lot of pieces cutting into this right here, right? So if I turn this off and on, you can see there's your cockpit. Then I got this and then I've got other pieces like here. See, these are cutting in. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna come to this and I'm gonna say, I want this actually to be like a white. And I'm gonna say now just RGB, color, fill, object. And now I see there's a different tone value there, right? So I'm using the painting in essence now even to also help, right? Give me certain tones. So even let's say this part right here, I also want this to have a white tone and see now there's a different one there and then in here so this is the line through here color fill object right so I could just do this right to start separating some tones so instead of doing this crazy blue excuse me hold on bless me sorry I don't want this blue anymore I kind of like now just this off tone thing that's starting to happen right and then I'm gonna say okay this can't be crazy yellow anymore right so I'm gonna say here and click I'll get that gray color fill object. And you can see we start getting a lot of different things and it's only because it's live booleans. Okay. So the live booleans is giving me the capability that each sub tool can have its own color. Each sub tool can have its own materials. You can start going crazy with this and doing whatever you want. Right. I don't even have to, I can come to this and say, I don't know why, but let's throw some kind of red on this. Right, and so this subtool, I can now say, let's throw this and have this have this red material, right? And see now only the parts that are in that subtool, which I'm using this to do a lot of cutting into the surface, has that material, right? Again, we're our goal is to have this, so let's go back to having that. Okay, so what I'm trying to emphasize. And this is my goal that I'm going to do. I'm going to do a version of my model that's kind of like what we're going to be talking about now for the rest of the stream, making it look like a tech specs, like it's a line art and tune looking. And then I want to do a version where it's kind of like a tune colored version, like if it was going to be like an anime, right? That is something I'm going to do once I get everything done with this guy. Can I make this transform into a robot? God, that'd be amazing. That'd be so much fun. Oh, and like Transformer or Mighty GoBots, Mighty Vehicles, GoBots, for those in the 80s, okay? It's, it, it is a freighter, but a, uh, with a snake tip twist. I like that, okay? So the modifiers are applied to the material, and they will update across all, all subtools right now, because every single subtool right now has the same material, right? That right now I have filled, right? That's when I, why I went to this plugin up here and did the fill, right? And I told it to fill the color. So it's filling whatever material selected here and whatever color selected here across every single subtool that has the eyeballs on, right? And then now if I come over here, anything I do to this material, see it's gonna go across all of them. Because right now, they all have the exact same material, right? So it depends on how much shading value do I want with this. So you can see there's five steps now. So in essence, there's five values of shade, which it's hard to see with like a white. Like, you know, if you do a color and here, let me turn everything off. So, sometimes you will be able to see more value tone in this, right? You can see the, the transitions a little bit better. Right, so there's with the shade value, steps of two, steps of one, steps of four, steps of three. And it's only happening to every single subtool, right? Because every single subtool has the same exact material on it. Okay, so does that answer your, your question that you were asking, um, Schlem? Just making sure you get what I'm saying here before I continue to move on. 
Okay, so you got it. Too many possibilities. I love. Yes. So, John, your question is: Do live Boolean materials determines the material remaining behind the cut object? Yes, it does. Right. Again, I'm using live Boolean still, right? So if, here we go to solo mode. This is the geometry, and the only thing that this geometry is doing is I have it set as a subtractive. So this geometry is set as a cutting into the surface, like taking a bite out of crime, baby. Right? Because I have live booleans turned on. So anything I do to this, right, is going to be rendered out, right? So if I change the color, again, if I change the color list and I say, all right, let's make this have the, a red, right? So now it's red with the same material and I turn off solo mode. You can see now the cutout is getting that red, right? So of course, when I go to render, the quality is going to get better. And now you can see everything's got red. So in essence, this is giving you guys the ability to have some fun, right? I can even come here and say, okay, th these round circular parts that I have right here, right? I want these to also have a different color, right? So instead of red, I'm going to say this is going to be purple, right? Fill that object, bring everything back, right? Going back to, oh my goodness, I moved. How do I get back to my original render? This is why we started this stream right in the draw palette by saying okay let's go back and I can get my three quarter view let's undo that and you can already see only that's purple now and this is red so you can go by sub tool like one whole sub tool get the same color but since I'm using live boolean there's different meshes here I can go crazy with that I kind of like the purple Let, let's fill this whole thing with purple that's kind of digging the purple kind of liking it Okay, so, you know, this is actually would be cool, a combination with the green that, you know, that green I was doing. Let's see how that looks. Oops, might help if I turned it on. That's looking pretty cool. It's Hulk. It's it's a Hulk ship. <laughs> right, this is, this is becoming Hulk's official cargo ship. <laughs> right, and then there you go. So now I've got that green middle and that purple happening right does that make sense does that clarify everything yeah you do have the ability when you export you can export vertex color yes we allow that in fact we allow that on our obj our obj will export vertex color information okay and it'll actually import information as well our stl also does that. Our STL will export color information and import color information. And our Vermal will also export vertex color information. So you have three ways of getting that out. And well, there's also a fourth. Our FBX can also do that. Um, John, to your question about um, SSS versus Wax Preview. So John's having us go tangent. So this is just a quick tangent. So this is, I started diving into this in my stream on Tuesday and then next Tuesday, we'll go a little bit deeper with this. I wouldn't do both, okay? If you're gonna turn on wax preview, I wouldn't also do an SSS. It, it's too much. The wax preview gives kind of a waxy look too. Um, I would go, if you're trying to go subsurface scattering, I would stick with just doing only the SSS. That's it, okay? to your question. Okay, so let's continue on here. Let's continue on this journey and going through here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this back to just being white again, all right? And I'm gonna go back to making this be the gray. So I'm gonna click and drag and get that gray color. Oops, and then fill the object. I'm gonna just go back because I want this to be all one tone for what I'm gonna be trying to do. Okay, so let's do this. Rendering it out. Again, bada bing, bada boom. All right, now let's start having some real fun here, okay? So I'm done with the material. I don't need that anymore. And now what I wanna go now is live in here for a while here. I wanna start living in my filter system. Okay, so this is a ton of fun, right? So for 2019, we added a ton more filters and a lot more power. And this really makes it awesome for me to quickly get out what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do some kind of like tech looking thing, 
right? In essence. Okay, that's that's what I want. Right? And like kind of like a tune shade look to this as well. So there are 12 filters that you guys are going to be able to start using, right? So right now all the filters are off. Okay, and I know that because that circle right there in the top right, it's closed. Okay, so that's the off state. When it's open, that's the on state. All right, so the minute I turn this on, you can see there's a little noise. So immediately this gives a feeling of, you know, like a rough kind of screen look to it, right? For those of us like in the old school 80 days VHS that maybe had some graininess in it. We're all spoiled now with everything's at least minimum HD and higher. And now we're 4K and 8K and 32K. Like there's a point our eyes cannot even see the Ks anymore. So I'm good with 4K. I don't need any more than that. So <clears throat> this is now applying something across the board. What's nice about this is this is all in real time. So I never need to re-render again. So what we're about to get into is just we can go nuts with this okay so we've got now a filter okay that i have turned on so i got the on button okay so this is a lot probably when you look at this menu it's like oh my god this is a cockpit there's so much stuff here i don't even know where to begin right so i want to take the time here to narrow this down for you okay and spend some time with you on making sure you understand how you can use this filtering system, okay? So, <clears throat> what I'm gonna do now is I've got a filter, and then right below the filter numbers is the filter that you want, okay? So I'm gonna click on this, and it's going to say, what filter do you want to have? So here's all the filters that you have at your disposal. And in fact, if you didn't wanna do a material version of Posterize, you didn't have to do that actually. There's even posterized options in here as a filter. So what I mean by that is we could have selected any material, like even just normal map material, right? Right, so you can see now I'm gonna render out a normal map material, okay? But there's even now, I could have said, no, you know what? I wanna now actually posterize this, right? And then now this, this is a posterized filter, okay? There is multiple ways to get this posterized look, okay? There's even in, in the render palette, okay? You have the ability, so I'm gonna turn what we had on again, okay? Let's select a different material. Let's go with, say, here, a basic material. You guys could also, just so you know, in render properties, there's actually a 3D posterize, right? So I could just have used this slider and just slid through and see what kind of posterizing I get. And this is using actually the 3D normal information to give us what I'm looking at. So you don't see the, it, it's all, in essence, it's trumping the material. In essence, it's taking the material and ignoring it. So it's not looking at the material really anymore at all. Right, so that's using like the actual 3D mesh to get the result, okay? So this is another way if you don't want to do it by material base, like I did here, right? That's up to you. There's there's more than one ways to go about this. Okay, now, what I want to start doing now is bringing this a little bit more to life. So right now I've got a posterize. Okay, so the first thing I'm probably going to want to do is I don't want my document to be orange. <laughs> it's not working for me. I want it to be white, okay? Um, I want to start making some of the line art pop up on this model, like come to life on this model, okay? I want to start doing some other things with the shadows maybe, okay? I wanna maybe start making, look at some point, maybe look like a sketch or a pen art, okay? So this is what all the filter systems gonna start coming into play, right? So just to start now having an understanding, I'm gonna, gonna switch to colorize, okay? And I'm gonna, this white swatch right here, so I've now selected colorize, Right now, it has got a blend mode. And right now, it's blending with just replace. In essence, whatever I'm going to do, replace it, okay? And now I'm going to say, okay, I want a color just because we've been doing it. Let's do this blue, right? And now you can see 
this blue is being applied. I no longer have an orange background. I got this ugly, like, sp spit, split pea, sweet pea green, right? And what's happening here is that color is mixing with the orange. And the reason why it's mixing with the orange is because the colorized slider is sitting at 50, in essence, 50%. Right. If I start moving this, start going further and go to 100, you can see it's now that color. Give me 100% of that color. And now it's mixing with that orange even more. So if I start dialing this back, right, see the orange starts popping back into shape. So in essence, this is a strength to that blue color. What do you want from it? OK. Do you want it to be 100%? And then now you've got an opacity control as well. So I can start knocking down the opacity to this as well, right? So in this case, it's starting to give it kind of like a little lighter blue tone to it, right? So you guys can start seeing what this filter does. It's just a blanket, boom, and it being real time, I'm starting to mess around with this, okay? So, so far, does everyone understand where I'm at? Is anybody lost? If someone's lost, raise your hand. I'll definitely won't see you, okay? But... This is definitely one of these Lisa needs bracing moments, right? That, hey, let's be paying attention. I'm going over everything I'm doing now is 100% Lisa, brace, Lisa needs braces to the look up here, look up here, look, 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 look up here. Okay. What's going on, useful idiot? Thanks for joining. Things are well. Thank you for asking. Hope things are well for you as well. Okay, so. If no one's lost, I'm going to continue. Dental plan. Yes, John, you know the episode. I love it. Okay, so, again, I've got a filter turned on. This is where I'm selecting my filter. Now you know this is controls of the filter, the strength of the filter. And in this case, I'm using color eyes, so I'm using this color swatch to drive the color. Okay, so now everything below here is where you guys probably go, ah, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. All right, so pretty much from, see this says this modifiers? Okay, so look at this top section is just pretty much your general filter driver. Like, is my filter on? What is the filter? And then how strong is that filter right now? Opacity and strength wise. And then are there any modifiers to the filter itself? Everything else below, okay, is a clipping or is a kind of way of masking. Think about it as masking. So just like if you went into something like Photoshop and you, you want to do a smart masking, right? And you want to do color similar masking, things like that. That's what all these things are below. But we are not in a 2D application. We're in a 3D application. So there are many things that we're going to be able to do now because we have a 3D mesh. We've got now normals we've got lighting information we got material information there's so much more we're going to be able to do so that's why there are so many sliders here but we're going to break down a, a, a ton of these today and start getting into these okay what's what's your questions useful idiot as i go through here throw them up there if your questions about booleans and dyn dino subdivide so i'm assuming you're talking about dynamic subdivisions okay so what I want to do now is I want to clip this. So this blue's cool, but I want the orange background still. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the slider that in essence clips this. And that slider is mask. So this is masking between document and object, right? So in the world, if we're going in a 2D application, we would need a, like some kind of object that allows us, obviously, in this case, you'd have, this would probably be white and everything else would be black. So if I change this to one, I get back, boom, my orange document. And now this blue ship, which is, this is actually, I like this color combination. It's happening right now, right out right out the gate. I've got this nice, this blue that I've picked with this orange. It really starts to make things pop better, right? And if I go the opposite direction, right? Now I'm gonna get this crazy green because now I'm saying that blue is only affecting the actual document. And what's great about this, you can see my shadows aren't being touched. Okay? So, this is allowing me to start doing this. Hold on, let me hold on, let me pull up something. John's useful idiot is sending us a, a link. You guys can all see the link. Right? Okay, so all you need to do is you need to bevel 
the actual object you're using. Okay? So I'm doing it in a lot of mine. So his question, everybody, so everyone, in case it hasn't seen the question, this is great. Okay, is, hey, I, he's using live booleans, and right now he's using this object to push into here, right? But this edge right here, right? He wants to have some kind of nice bevel there. You need to use this is going to be the fastest and easy way to do that. Okay? That's going to be the best way to do this. That's what I'm assuming you're asking useful, right? Is you want a, a little bit of a bevel right here. You don't want this right here to be so sharp. I'm assuming that's what you're asking. I'm going to give it a minute because my, my obviously my real time is behind what you guys are streaming. Okay. So for me, this is the best way to do this. Okay. So here, this is 100% tangent. But it, you know what? It's relating to what we're doing, and it's how I did a lot of the stuff on my ship. Okay? So I'm going to quick save this just so we can come back to this. Okay? The beauty about quick saves is it's project-based. Right? So it's going to load everything for me. So I've been playing with my rendering and things like that. Right? So when you guys are saving projects, it's looking at all these render settings I'm changing and all these lighting savings I'm changing. Right? So... We open up Lightbox, can okay, go to the quick saves. So you can see right here the quick saves that I'm making. Right? And you can see them right there. Right? That there's an orange and that green, so it's saving them. Okay. So <clears throat> just for the sake of you have an understanding, let's grab here, let's grab a cube. Let's make that a poly mesh. Okay. Let's switch the material so you guys can are going to get a visual better understanding of what we're doing here. Okay, so I'm using now this material, so now it's a shaded material. Let's kind of remake something a little bit of like what what he was making. So I'm going to grab the cylinder. Okay, uh, let's turn on my polyframe. I'm going to come down here to my initialized state of this cylinder 3D. All right. Uh, I don't want any spans there, and I don't want the height to be so tall. So that works for me. And maybe, you know, you can add more spans here. I really don't need them because I know I have things like dynamic subdiv down the line. Okay. And then now I'm going to go here, right? And I'm going to make this a poly mesh. And now I'm going to say, all right, uh, let's go. I'm going to come out of perspective for now, just so you guys can get a visual understanding, right? So the other question that's popping up about the filters and a uh, document size, let me come back to this. Let me just finish this one up. And that, that is a fantastic question that's being asked right now from YouTube, from Yet King. Okay, so I'm going to come in here. I'm going to say, let's grab my extender, okay? And I want to start using this extender. I don't want this scale up. I want to grab this orange and there. Okay, now I got something like this. Okay. Um, and then now I want to start using this. Okay, so let's say, let's switch to Z Modeler. Let's insert it edge loops. Let's do more than one. Yeah, let's do that. Perfect. Okay, I don't need this one and I don't need that one. Okay, so now I'm going to say Q mesh this. Let's go poly loop. Okay, and then let's just do something like this. Let's just have something that's cutting into the surface for me. Okay. Um, the next thing I want to do is when I go to use this as a Boolean shape, I want to know what does it look like if I was to divide, right? That looks garbage. So I'm going to throw a crease on this, and you can see I get what I want. Okay. Um, I'm going to say I never have my crease level sitting all the way up. And my dynamic, this is more what I'm looking for. Something like that. Okay? And I know I'm going to use this with live booleans. Okay? So I'm going to do, I want to do a mirror and weld on this. Okay, along the Y. So then I get both things on both the same side. Okay, and there's a reason for that. I'm only doing this for a visual cue when I see the object in my brush. That's the only reason why I'm doing this mirror weld. Okay, so now we've got something, all right? So I'm gonna say Shift D, because I wanna come out of dynamic when I'm capturing this. I don't need to be in dynamic mode. 
I'm gonna say brush. Okay, let's let's call this, let's number these so we know when we're gonna, I'm gonna show you the difference. Let me rename this one. I'm gonna call this one one. Okay, and now we have that. I'm gonna say brush, create insert. I'm gonna say a new brush. So now what we have is this object, okay? So I'm gonna come back to this cube, right? I'm just gonna duplicate another cube and I'm gonna size it down, right? So it's tiny, it's inside the cube. Again, it's not relevant, okay, what this is. Yeah, so John's asking another question. Is there any reason why the crease level set at 15? Since dynamic subdiv can only go to seven. Okay, guys, the crease level's been there for like 18 years, if not 20 years. Okay, so if I was a, originally, when I was going to apply a crease, I would, if I'm putting a crease, I'm putting it for a reason. I want that edge to stay sharp. I have never been able to go to 15 subdivision levels on any mesh I've ever created in ZBrush. I've never gotten that number. So in essence, setting it at 15 is pretty much just like it's maxed out. You'll never hit it. 15. Even if you took a six-sided cube and start dividing, you still won't get to 15 subdivision levels. You'll probably maybe get to 12. So all that slider is saying is how many levels to hold. And the reason why we're capping dynamic subdivs out is there doesn't need to be... There's a point where the previewing that you're seeing in dynamic, there's going to be no difference. I guarantee you on most of your meshes, even level six and seven, there's no difference visually. There's So there's no point in us keep giving you more dynamic subdivs. You're not going to change the visual look of the model. It's just not going to happen. It's just, it's just like with any model. You could be sitting on a model that's 4 million and then you divide up and make it 16 million. You might not see any difference in the 4 million to 16 million, right? Visually. So that's why there's these caps. There's no point in us giving you 15 divisions in dynamic. You won't even be able to get to that. And it's going to bog down the system for what? Pointlessness. Okay. So that's why. All right. So I've got this cube. Cube. All right. I've got live billions turned on. This is a technique we've already talked about in our Thursday streams, right? I think we talked about this in the last stream we did this two weeks ago for this series. Okay. So I'm turning this into sub subtractive. Right, and then now I'm drawing it out. And you can see, we immediately get something. And what I'm getting is that cut, right? I'm getting that in there. You guys can see, I'm gonna turn off the floor for now too. So by default, the brush is obviously sitting on top of the surface. So I wanted to cut into the surface. So in my depth, I'm gonna just, for now, change this to zero. And then when I draw out, this is what I'm getting now, right? Okay, so I'm gonna say, you know what? Let's go with a depth of maybe 10 instead. So I don't want it to cut so much into the surface, right? So now this isn't cutting so much into the surface. And if I turn on dynamic subdiv here, you can see it's smooth, right? So this is actually a pretty cool shape that I would probably use more than not. Now, looking at this, I've got a very sharp version of this. So there's sharpness here, there's sharpness there, and there's even sharpness there, right? So I want to change this and I want to maybe make this so it doesn't have so much sharpness to it. Okay, and then yes, John says you can use HD geometry and go higher for sure, but HD geometry, we can't show you all 1 billion polygons at once though too, right? So that's your key thing difference there too. All right, so let's go back to this object, all right? And I'm going to make now another version of this, okay? And I'm going to say this and then let's say, okay, right here and for the sake of just so it's happening on the bottom at the same time i'm gonna have symmetry on so i'm gonna do and switch to a bevel here okay and i'm gonna turn on my polyfer i'm gonna put a bevel there i'm gonna tap and put the same bevel there okay and i'm gonna put a bevel here okay and what i'm gonna do is that bevel maybe do i want that much or do i want a little bit more so i'm gonna go q mesh poly loop and I'm just gonna pull this out even more. So now I've just made that bevel bigger right there, right? So I got that bevel, that bevel, right? And I can even come in here and put a little bevel right there if I want to, right? So now when I divide, you're gonna get like roundness chamfering. That's not what I want. So I want creasing to have happening and I'm gonna crease by Paul Gabriel right here. Yeah, baby, I've got a button. 
right? It's pretty much just crease by polygroups, right? Um, I don't like the softness I'm getting in this bevel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a couple edge loops here just so it sharpens that bevel up a little bit more. I want a little bit sharper bevel. This is fine. I like the softness in there. I like that softness. I'm, you know what? You know what? I lied. I'm going to actually, I want this one to be a little bit more harsh there, a little bit more harsh there, and then in here. Yeah, there. I want something like that instead. There we go. So that's what I have, right? So now watch what happens. So now I have this. Okay, I'm going to come out of dynamic. I'm going to come back to this brush that we made. Let's rename this now two. So we have a version one, we have a version two. Okay. Now I'm going to say, all right, that's how I want to draw it out. Brush, create insert, and I'm going to say append it. Okay, now it's telling me, hey, 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 you've got more than one. When there's more than one, hit the M key. But now that we have this IMM viewer, okay, it doesn't really matter anymore. So now I've got one and two. Okay. And then yes to insane pixels question. They're asking, um, can you import models from Maya and use the creasing from Maya? Yes, and vice versa. You can export from ZBrush's creasing and it'll go in Maya. For that, you can use our FBX. You can use Go Z, or you can even we actually export a .ma file, a Maya ASCII file. So you 100% can do that. Now the only difference is Maya's creasing has the ability to make the creasing not be 100% strength, right? So in essence, you can tell the creasing of one edge to be 50% strength. ZBrush does not do that. ZBrush is always 100%, 100, 100, okay? Uh, no, that wasn't Barney from this, that was more Fat Albert. Hey, 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 it's Fat Albert. Like, I don't know, that might be a little too old. That's early 80s, late 70s, and unfortunately, Bill Cosby. Who, Let's not talk about Bill Cosby right now. Okay, so now we've got this, right? So this is version one, right? So let's undo one of them so we only have one. Okay, so there's version one. And then now we need version two. I already know the problem for version two is going to be, it's going to float on top of the surface. So I need to find the right now depth. So let's just go with a depth of 10. Okay, and then I'll draw that out. And then now I got a depth of 10. And you can see right now that depth is too much, right? It's digging into the surface. I, I added this on purpose to be like a bevel, okay? So it, right now it's, it's too much into the surface. So I need to go a little bit higher. So let's try 15. And then there, now you got 15, right? And you see there's a slight bevel right there now if I want it, right? So now, Right, it's going into the surface and I got a bevel. And then now if I want this to have a bevel, I'm just doing, so you can see the other bevels are now there. There's another bevel right there. See, there's another bevel right there. Because remember, I put that on the top, right? I put that, we go back to the shape. I put that right there and right there, right? And right now this line, this edge right here is what's giving me something else. So for example, if I want to just straight bevel, Here's what I could do. Here, let's make a third version. Okay, I'm going to delete this edge loop, this edge loop, this edge loop, and this edge loop. So now we've got straight bevel in, and there we go, okay? So let's rename this number three. Let's rename this and call this three, okay? Let's select this brush again, okay? And I'm gonna say brush, and I'm gonna say create insert so I can append it, and now I've got one, two, three. I'm going to save this out. This is actually really good stuff that we're creating here, right? So now I have one, two, three versions, right? So let me do this, right? So we've got version one, okay? And then watch this. I'm just going to duplicate, tap, and now I've got a, ver there's version two, okay? And then I need to go and change this depth. So let's just put it at 15. Okay, come back to this, click here and grab it, and then there you go. And now you can see there's a bevel. But how much of a bevel do you want? Do you want like that much of a bevel? Okay, and if you want that much of a bevel, then you just need to set your depth right, right? So 
I just need to come back to number three, right? Let me turn off the gizmo and say, okay, the depth, the embedding, let's embed it more. So let's, let's put it at five. So when I draw out, you can see, boom, but now it's got that portion. I don't want that portion in it. So let's try, it's trial and error. I can't give you the exact number, but now you can see how I can start getting a beveled edge. This is how I do what you are asking. Back to the original question. There, that's what I like. So now, because I have a gizmo and I have this brush now, variations, I can hold the control key, duplicate it, and then say, no, no, give me three, and then there you go. So now I have three variations of this little repeating kind of thing in there, right? And now this is all in one brush. So at any point in time, as a designer, Right, I can say, all right, let's 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 draw this one out now. Perfect, and watch, we can do stuff like this. Like, look at that, that like, I, I wouldn't even wanna try and figure this out. Now I got that, okay, so, mm, okay, but what would number two look like? What would number one look like? Like, what do you want? Right, so this is very boom, 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 and then there's two, and then there's three. Like, and then I can just quickly cycle through these and see which one I actually prefer. So to your question, that's how I handle that. I do it in the live Boolean stage rather than doing it after you apply your live Boolean. So I think it was John that asked that question. I don't even remember anymore who asked that question. John, it was you, right? Let me scroll up. No, it's useful idiot. Useful idiot, you asked the question. Well, here, let's do a virtual hug. Virtual, virtual hug. Huh? The embedding is per mesh, not per brush. Like you're not setting that embed value for the entire brush. That's not a global setting because every, every mesh is gonna have different like heights, right? That I'm adding into this brush. So you're gonna have different embeds across the board. But once you've done this and that's it, I've got this saved and now I just use this forever. So as an artist that does hard surface, I have started creating my own IMM Boolean brush where I just keep adding it. Like I'm gonna now go add these to my brush because these three, I, I love them. There's gonna be so many ways I will use this over and over and over and over again, okay? 100% you can add color to the specific faces if you want to. Yes, you can do that. Okay, but keep in mind, I'm very, very, very low polygon right now, right? So your, your coloring isn't gonna be harsh, right? You can't just make all these faces one color and then all these faces in here be one color unless you had enough topology to support that. Okay, so you gotta keep that in mind. But yeah, that is possible what you're asking. Oh, you're gonna mess with that now, useful idiot, and not listen to the rest of my stream? Now I'm, now I'm crushed. Now I am crushed. Okay, wait, Calabunga. Awesome name, love it. Uh, I've created four cylinders to be like pillars, and now I want to brick them with detail. And for that detail, I want to kind of cut the brick out. Um, for me, I go about that with nano mesh and some live Boolean, right? Would be one way I'd go about that. And in fact, my pillars, I would have used a ray mesh. So I would have started with a ray mesh and then I would then use some nano mesh. And then whatever's happening to the one array mesh is gonna to happen to all the pillars. So Kawabunga, have you ever used array mesh and nano mesh? Because that's how I would go about that. Right, so we're gonna be very quick about this. I love this. Another, another tangent. Oh, you're a complete noob to ZBrush, oh boy. All right, I'll try to go as slow as I can, okay? But I wanna definitely get back to our filter conversations. It's already going on 1230 for sure. Okay, so I'm just gonna use this, okay? I'm just gonna use this piece just as a visual example so you can have an understanding. I'm gonna say make a poly mesh, which you probably already have, you already have your pillar, okay? So I'm just making a mesh right, real quick right now. So number one, you're having pillars that you want a repeating pattern, obviously. So that's where array mesh is gonna come in very handy for me, okay? So array mesh is right here in topology, and I have covered this in past streams many times, right? So I'm gonna turn on array mesh, right? And then I'm gonna say, 
all right, down here, I want an offset. So I'm going to tell them my floor grid, what direction do I want to offset them in? I'm going to offset them in the Z. So that blue line right there is the Z. So I'm going to offset here. I'm going to go to the Z amount, and you can see I got another version of this, right? So we'll put this at, let's say, five. How many of those do I want? So you have four of them, so I'm going to put this at four. Okay, and now I'm gonna like, okay, I want the amount to be a little bit more. So maybe not that much. So you can see on the fly, I can continue to adjust this. This is the beauty of a ray mesh. The other beauty of the ray mesh is you can see this one's colorized, right? But the other ones are not, right? So you can see I can change the color, but the other ones are not, okay? Okay, John, have a great one. Be safe. Okay, so now I've got these repeating. There's my pillars repeating, easy peasy, okay? And then now maybe in here you want the bricks or things to have, have happen. There are multiple ways I could go about this for sure, okay? I could do something as simple as, you know, here, we'll, we'll make this a new poly group, green, and then let's make this a new poly group. And I'm hitting Control W to make it a new poly group. Okay, so now I've got the green caps and the purple. You could just pretty much go Z modeler if you wanted, okay? Come here and say, okay, let's do an inset, all right? And let's each polygon and let's do polygroup all. So I'm gonna do this, right? And then now that's got a new polygroup, Q mesh, polygroup all, and pull them out. And then this is gonna just create that. So it looks like tiling perfectly tiled pieces, right? As an example, okay? So the quick and dirty, right? Especially if you want something that is perfectly repeating like this. Now, if you're doing bricks, you want some kind of offset. So what I'm gonna do is use the modeler really quick to change the poly grouping. So let me, let's see if we can get, I just keep hitting the Alt key to cycle through maybe different poly grouping. Okay, that will work. So I'm gonna go every other here. Okay, so I now got a purple and I got blue. So there's every other, right? I'm gonna open up my light box. I'm gonna go to brush. Uh, I'm gonna go to beta testers. Let's see and let's see what we have in here. Okay, we got different things in there. Is it still in here? We used to have a brush that was literally bricks. We must have taken it out because it was really big though was the problem. The file size of it was big. I think we might have taken it out unfortunately. Hold on, let me, let me double check this and make sure that it's not sitting somewhere else in here. Oh, there it is. Okay, so here it is right here. So there's clods and here's bricks, okay? The problem with this is these bricks, they do have color. Uh, they could have color information on them, if I remember right. They're kind of dense, okay? So just be mindful of that. All right, so let's just grab just a simple brick. Here, let's, I like that one, okay? And what I wanna do is actually, I'm gonna hit the brush B, and I'm gonna come down here and say create nano mesh brush. Okay, so I'm gonna click on that, and then now, in essence, what we have here is another Z modeler brush. So in essence, I created a new Z modeler brush, but I have insert nano, and I'm gonna say, come here and say polygroup all. Okay, and now I'm gonna grab a brick that I want. Uh, let's grab seven, and I'm gonna put that brick. Right, okay. so this brick is now being applied, right, to to this, okay? And what's happening here is it's going across the board, but it's a nano, right? So let's say I don't want any rotation, or maybe the rotation I want is 90 degrees, right? So I have that rotation. I can make them bigger if I want to, right? So the problem we have here is this is super dense and nano mesh has a polygon cap. 
So I'm reaching the polygon cap because this is equaling about 47 million polygons right now, which is, it's, it's too much, right? So this is the one I'm saying the problem is with these bricks, right? Okay, so let me just create something real fast that isn't so dense. I would go, I'd want to go and fix this brush. They're just, they're way too dense for what I'm trying to use it for. Okay, so let me just quickly make some kind of just different brick le looking thing here, all right? So, burn, burn, burn. Q mesh it, perfect. All right, let's go ahead and say, all right, need to be a brick, so let's go like this, all right? And then let's go like that. Okay, something like that, perfect. Let's throw on dynamic and let's do a Q grid so that I can bevel the edging a little bit. So it's, so in essence, this is now my perfect brick. Okay, so I'm gonna apply that. So now we've got this brick. So this is brick number one. It's very low in polygon. Okay, and then let's go ahead and say, let's call this brick one. Okay, let's duplicate this. And we've got now a brick two. And let's just change this up just so visually, you can visually see the differences in the bricks. Okay, so I'm gonna just do something. I'm not, I'm not trying to be perfect right now with this. I just want something that visually we are gonna be able to tell that there's, there's different bricks here, right? Uh, let's do something bigger on this side. Let's do this, this, and let's take a bigger chunk out of it, okay? So you can see we got different types of bricks there with like different notching right now and everything else like this. Yeah, so 3D art, uh, Javad, I would go and redecimate all those bricks, 100%, okay? Right, so now let me make a new brush. So I'm gonna say brush, and this time I'm gonna click on make, create, insert multiple mesh, and now it's grabbed both bricks here, right? And then I wanna turn this into a nano, so I'm gonna say brush, create nano. So now I've got a nano, 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 nano. So coming back to this, right? I'm gonna say again, I want nano, polygroup all, and then now you can see that brick is going to every single one, right? And then what's happening is I've got an array mesh with a nano mesh, right? And now I can say, all right, rotation of this needs to be a negative 90, we'll say, or 90, doesn't really matter, okay? Uh, I want this to fit, right? So and then I'm gonna make the size one. So now it fits this. If you want to fill, it's going to stretch it across the entire polygon face, if you want, right? So let's just say, let's do a fill, okay? And then now here, let's put the good brick, this brick, okay? And then I'm going to even do this. I'm going to go to index zero, copy that, and then paste it. So now you can see I've got these variations in bricks. Now, the one thing now I want to do with the second one, so index zero is the one with the little notches. Index one is the perfect brick right now. Okay, and what I want to do is add a rotation to this. Okay, so I want to start adding, you know, kind of an offsets as well, right? So I can do offsetting, right? And I can do offsets like this. I can do offsets like that, right? And then I can even do rotations like this or rotations like that, right? So there is going to be a lot of ways for me to start messing around with this, okay? And start looking at this differently, right? So you can start having a lot of fun with this, right? And see just different rotations that you can get. You can do kind of different offsets as well to give it a little more depth. So I want an offset in the Y. So I'm gonna go Y, let's go 0.8. And let's go point one, right? So you can see what we can get here, point one nine. So I'm just trying different offsets to what I want. Point one one, point one, right? Point nine nine, and then there you go. And then now that is repeating across all of them. That's how I would do a column. That's a repeating column. And then I can swap these out, these nanos. I don't have to have to be the same brick. I can swap it out at any time, right? So I can switch to this and just come here and say, instead of in the face here being 
by polygon, if I say single polygon, right? And you can see I can swap out at any time any bricks that I want. So I can do, in essence, I'd have a awesome thing like that to have in a multiple thing. So there you go. That's how I do it. And then it's an instancing system. So the only thing ZBrush is looking at is this. So my polygon count is only 482 polygons right now. It's super tiny. And there you have it. Okay? That was a massive tangent. Right? Back to rendering. <laughs> back to the rendering. So let's get back to this. And let's render this out. Oh, yes. I want to turn back on my materials, too. Let's turn all this back on and re-render this out. Okay. So let's regroup. So we're back in the filter system now where I've got a color, right? And then now I can mask and say, for where is it going to be? Oh, let me turn my floor back on so we also get uh, we also get that <coughs> floor to give us shadows okay <clears throat> so you can see I can have the background I can do that so you might be making a a project or a filter system that you don't know down the road what you're gonna have right Mike may I'm glad you like the tangents Thank you. So what I want to do is now is kind of say, you know what, this orange background is ridiculous. What I'm always going to want, because I'm going to be trying to making like a tech looking thing. I want this background to, no matter what, always be white. Right? So, and then I want it to be in the background, right? So I want this, right, color to say, hey, you know what, I want white to go on to this, right? So I need to find a filter right that's going to drive this colorize isn't going to do it paint though will do it right so if i do this you can see now my background right is being changed and now i'm painting right this right right and then i can say negate the shadows right so now i'm doing a double clip i'm doing you know paint in essence everything one color that's not the model. So that's what this masking negative one is doing. Paint filter is literally like if you took a paintbrush and you dipped it and just started painting. You're obviously that color is gonna will go over top anything, whether it's a screw, whether it's a wall, whether it's a picture painting, right? Where colorize is more a different type of filter. It's just adding color to what's already there, right? It's a little bit like an ad, right? So paint is telling ZBrush, no, 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 no. Okay? That's what I don't want you to do. So you can even see my shadows on the floor. If you guys see the shadows, on the floor, see that they have a little bit, I don't know if you guys can see it in the stream. There's a slight bit of the orange there. Because I am now telling this first filter, okay, the background needs to be white, but I don't want to affect shadows that are on the background. So because I've now added a double clip, I've got masking of negative one and shadows negative one. So when I go negative in the masking, it's flipping it, right? So if I go this direction, see the whole model becomes white. If I go this direction, the whole model in the background becomes masked, right? So this is important. So now if I do this, there's only shadows right there. So the only thing that you are seeing right now in the model is shadows, which this could be beneficial. We're gonna see, and this is where we're gonna start having some fun with this. There's, there's just so much you can do, right? And then this is saying to clip the shadowing. So if I do this, right, now it's saying, see the shadows are now white. So now in essence, it's saying on the model, and now the only thing I want white to have it are the shadows. So if I change this to a crazy color, you'll see the only thing that gets colorized or painted in this sense are the shadows, okay? So what I wanna do is I wanna start setting up a scene to say, okay, I want, only in the background and but don't affect the shadows right and then you can see i only want only want the shadows in the background affected so you can see there's so many ways we can start playing with this so i'm gonna say give me that all right okay i like that let's now filter two all right let's do paint again all right let's do gray let's go with like pure black all right, uh, this time though, okay, that's great, but that's not really what I want. I don't want just pure black. So 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to a different filter. I'm going to switch to outline edge. Okay. And now if we turn the filter off and then turn it back on, you can see there's going to be a slight edge going around the model. And this filter now, I'm going to say the color, I'm going to go really strong with it. And here, if I change now this color to a blue, you'll see the edging that's happening from this filter now. Right? So you can see that blue, that's what this filter's doing now. Right? So me going negative 100, it's the blue. If I go positive, it's using this color. Right? So here, if I switch this to red, so see now this is using the red because this is at 100 this way. If I go negative 1, it's blue. Okay? Yes, this is NPR, not the radio station, non -photo photorealistic rendering that I'm doing. Flexing tongue, yes, that's what I'm doing right now. Okay, so this filter also has modifiers, right? So you can see I can add a thickness to this and make it really thick. Right now there's also a noise on it. See, this will start making it look like a pencil. I don't want to make it look like a pencil. I just want to give me straight lines, right? There's a fall off. So how much do you want? Like how strong do you want this to be? You can even do an inner cavity, right? So now it's doing inner instead of an outer cavity. You could do both, right? And so now if I switch this back to black, boom, like that, that starts to pop more, right? And I can now even say this, only put it on the background, right? So now this, if I keep going thicker, you can see it's only adding this really thick outline, right? As an outer edge, as an inner edge right now. And then I can say outer cavity, inner cavity, what do I want? Right, so I kind of like that. Let's play with the fall off a little bit, a little too much. Okay, I like five, that looks good. So now I'm using this thing as kind of my outlining item, right? It's kind of like my sketching, right? So now let's say, you know what? I don't want tune shading. I just want to start making something that looks like lines. Like it's like tech. So my problem is my the material attributes I've been using on the model is still set to tune shading. So this is going to open up things for me. So we already know how to do this. I'm going to make now filter three. Okay. I'm going to say, I want this filter to be paint hundred percent white. Okay. And then on, on this, right? So pretty much now that model has been cut out, right? And this is a prime example of showing you the hierarchy of the filters are important. So this is just like if you were in a 2D application that you've got a, you know, you've got a layer and let's just say Photoshop, right? And then your next layer is above that and a layer above that and above that, that's a hierarchy. So whatever layers above the one that gets applied on top of the layers below it. That's the same thing that's happening here. Layer filter three is getting applied after filter one's applied first, then filter two, then filter three. So now what I want to do is say, okay, Boom, let's now go back and say, let's go and get that cavity again, okay? So there's even an outline cavity. And now it's just like that, that inner ship comes back to life for me. And I'm gonna say, all right, I want it to be really dark, okay? This has got modifiers, okay? So let me play with the fall off. I wanna get a little bit different fall off. Sensitivity, how sensitive do I want ZBrush to see the lines, in essence, uh, we'll go there. I don't want any noise. Do I want inner? Do I want both? Do I want just outer? Okay, I, I'm preferring outer. So sensitivity and then the fall off. I wanna have a little bit of different fall off there. Okay. And now you can clearly see the difference between the two, right? You can see the big outline one, right? And then now I've got the inner line one going, right? And you can see this is starting to look like some kind of like sketched portion, right? 
So this is really starting to come together, right? And I can do an AA half, and then there, that's what that's gonna look like right now, right? And the dude is just getting destroyed down there. <laughs> okay, so the next thing I wanna do is maybe adjust my shadows, okay? I don't like the shadows and what's happening with the shadows, all right? And in this case, guys, what have we also lost? We've lost our shadows, right? So if you remember, we're using this paint and I can say, but don't affect the shadows, right? And then boom, like that, we get our shadows back, right? Don't forget that we had some shadows on there. So, but do you want shadows or not? You gotta remember this third filter, remember we're using a paint because I wanted to get rid of all material attributes. And at any point in time, I can turn this off and now I've got my tune shaded version with the line, right? So I can literally get multiple different types of renders out at the same time here, okay? So, all right, let's now go and have some fun with the shadows, okay? So this is my inner cavity. So filter five, uh, I wanna do some stuff with the shadowing, okay? So let's say I don't want a glow filter. Let's do screen tone horizon lines. And then I only want it on the shadows, which boom, look at that. That's pretty awesome. You know what, maybe do I want that? All right, let's go, let's look at some modifiers here. All right, let's say, do I want this to have different size say constant size do i want this kind of thing happening right do you want inner transparency outer transparency right i kind of like i kind of like this for the shadows on the model right so then i'm going to say let's only put that in the shadows on the model right so now that is really starting to come very different right so i've got modifiers here that i'm playing with consistency and then I got transparency options here so one is the white and then this is now their black okay and then color intensity is a whole nother level man it's looking at the actual render and finding intensity shades it's just this is so much fun I love doing this this is I really enjoy this now the other thing that I can do is I haven't touched this so I can make these be a lot tighter or bigger, right? So you can see just this slider alone, I can make this have a very different look. I like that. I like what's going on there. So I've got now five filters. I got a filter giving me the white background. I've got a filter giving me that big outside edging on the model. I've got a filter giving me, you know, just making sure trumping any material and color attribute that's on my models and giving it white. And NPR, aim and inclusion, not really NPR, but you could do it. There's already an ambient inclusion inside of ZBrush. If you wanted an ambient inclusion, we can render with an ambient inclusion, right? So you have that in your render properties. There's an AO right here. Okay, and then by default, here, I'm going to up my resolution. Right, so now if I re-render, we're going to re-render with shadows and an ambient inclusion. So if you wanted to throw an ambient on this, that's that simple. It's easy. Okay, but the thing you have to remember now is filters are kicking in, right? So there's filters like, okay, so this is my background. Okay, this one's the outer, outer edge part, right? So you gotta tell it, hey, this filter don't affect the ambient inclusion. So you gotta go in negative one. Then this painting, I also don't wanna affect Right, and then there's my there's the ambient. Now you see how it pops into play. Now I just need to find the right settings for my ambient occlusion. Right, but if I didn't go adjust this and tell it to clip out this white filter that I'm doing color paint, you won't see the ambient. Right, but yeah, I could probably do an ambient as well in the filter system. Okay, but I want to I want to keep going here. So. <clears throat> Again, we've got this, this is giving us the white color. Again, this is giving us, right, the ship color. So look how easy it is now for me to change the color of the ship. It's so easy. Bada bing, bada boom. It's just a filter now and it's real time. I can do whatever I want now. This is awesome. God, I love this. This is just so much fun to mess with. I, I'm really, I, you guys might not dig it, but I dig it, okay? 
And then now this one is giving me the internal cavities, right? So I turn this off and on, right? That's what it's giving me, right? And then number five is giving me now the shadows, right? And then so what I kind of want to do, let's copy this filter. Let's on, turn on six and paste it. And let's change this so that it's only happening on the ground. And I want this, the grounds, to have a different look in the shadows. So that it really separates the difference between them. Okay, and let's do no transparency. Let's do not a consistent size. Well, it doesn't matter that now. And then now I just want to find the right number that I want. Right? So you can see I now have made the shadows on the ground have come some completely different. You could also switch this and say, how about we go vertical? Right? Because maybe you need or dots instead. Right? That'll help push maybe something for you. And then now I could have something more like that as the ground shadows. Right now it's starting to, you can start seeing the difference between the two. You know, the next thing I want to do is I want those shadows on the ground to stand out a little bit better. Right? So I'm going to make another filter now. Okay? For this. And then I'm going to say, let's do another uh, outline edge. Okay? I want it to be black. Okay? And you can see I can even add that that will pump this up more. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say only to be on the floor, shadows, right? So I'm telling it to start going on this. And then, there I got an inner cavity on the model. So I'm adding another line right here. So if I turn this off, watch the difference, okay? It's off, on, off, on. So I only want it to be on the outside underneath. So that starts, will help me with the shadows. Okay. We're really still helping me push the, that part, right? And then you can keep doing stuff like this, right? I can say, all right, let's do, let's add an eighth one and let's do a paint. All right, and just for the sake of seeing it. And then I only want it to Go in the background, and I only want to go in the shadows, and then I can fresnel it if I want to, right? Multiple directions if I want to. There's multiple things I can start doing here. I can give the shadows their own color if I want to. It's just, there's so much here, right? And then I can say, I can even say edge detection if I want to. I can say cavity here, right? And then now you're having this, and I can say, there's, it's just endless on the things that we're going to be able to do here, right? It's just so many combinations. It's just figuring out what is it I'm trying to do here, right? What is it that I want, okay? And finding the right, the right filter that works for you, right? So now I've got this here, red right going in spots and then I can say I want it on that shadow right and then you can even make this radius change these rate there's so many things we're going to be able to do now let's turn that cavity off edge detections it's just now just playing with these right and finding the right combination but you can see how far down we can go with this Right? I can even throw if this, I can say, you know what, let's throw here, let's, for whatever reason, I'm enjoying the blue. So let me go back to three quarters. Okay? Let's re-render. Right? And then I'm going to say, let's throw this to make this be blue instead. Okay? And let's make this be paint. All right, and I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna put this on the model, and it's on the model everywhere right now. But what I'm gonna do is come down here, and I'm gonna say by normal, and now there's only certain normals getting that blue. And I'm gonna do is come over here, and I'm gonna switch that, that it only looks 
I don't know, maybe I want to do like kind of like a bottom rim light kind of look to it. Painterly. Right, so now I got that one, is that blue? I'm gonna now say, okay, I like this. Let's copy that. Let's go to filter nine. Let's paste, right? Let's flip it. And then now let's pick a different color. And on the fly, watch things change. And figure out what is it, what do I want? Maybe I just want a darker blue tone. Let's keep it saturated. Maybe something like that. Right, so you can see how much variations and changes I'm starting to make happen here. It's it's insane. It's it's so much fun. It's addicting. I really hope that you guys are seeing the light here and seeing the things that you can do. Right, so this can create some kind of nice rim, right? And then you have a roll off, so I can push it so it's not so strong. So now I've got this blue giving me stuff. I've got this or this yellow orange giving me a rim light and at any time I can say turn it off turn it off and now I've got something like that right it's it's up to me what I want right and now I got just back to being a line art now the one thing I want to do now okay this is all cool and fun and everything I want this to look like a blueprint right so there's already a filter that exists for this so there are pre-made filters. So I made a couple here. So there's, there's already right here, like see one right here. So, but I want to redo this from scratch a little bit with you guys. So you guys can have an understanding of the fun you can even have with this, right? So there's, there's a bunch of stuff here. You guys can just double click and it loads it. All right. But let's finish this stream off by remaking our own type of blue screen or a blueprint look that we want. Okay, so we've already got a pretty good foundation here. Right now we're using six filters are turned on, right? We got filters doing different things with the shadows, right? There's a lot going on in here, right, for this. I'm gonna turn that one back on. Okay, so let's have some fun here. So number one, I need to change the color, right? It shouldn't be white, right? So I have two filters giving me white right now. I've got a filter just trumping the whole background white, and then I got a filter giving the white on the mesh, right? So I have that filter, okay, giving me certain things like this one. So let's go and say color, uh, let's, I want it to be a different blue. Uh, let's just find the blue that I would want maybe. Let's go a little bit lighter blue yeah yeah something like that okay so now the mesh has got the blue right and I need in essence again we need blue to be everywhere else right okay so I can grab that blue so when you guys click on a color swatch and grab it'll grab a color Right, and this right now will grab any color that's available. So you remember my document is actually orange, right? So what's happening here is it's going, when you click and drag, it's remembering the orange. What I wanna do is actually pick up the render state with the filters, okay? So I wanna go, all right, I'm gonna hold the Alt key and click, and you can see it's picking up the blue now. Right, and then I have to turn off the shadows. Right, and now you've got shadows also happening here, right? So now I've got the white shadows back because this is in essence trumping those shadows. And there's some things I'm gonna go do with the shadows afterwards. So now I've got this light blue thing happening, right? And if remember, we have a filter that's driving the shadows, which is this, right? So do I want that or do I not want that, right? Because now I've got this color so I can do this, right? And the shadows will disappear, right? And you do this, you got different things happening. So the shadows are gone. So maybe, maybe I don't want the shadows to be affected, all right? Just 
my choice. Now coming back to this, I turn this on. This is a dots filter. So this is why we have transparency stuff, right? And then now I might want to rechange the size of these dots, right? And then maybe change the transparencies around, right? Having constant dots if I want. I mean, different, see, there's so many things that we can do, right? If you just want to say, forget it, just give me the shadows. I'm good with that. That's what I want. I want those shadows on the ground to look like that. I want the shadows on the mat, on the, on the actual ship to look the way it looks right now, right? And if you want those shadows to be pure black, remember our problem is this blue color now that's filling the document, I'm telling it to ignore the shadows, right? So then I need a filter that I probably want to make it paint, which we're on. I'd probably want black, right? Uh, 100%. And that looks pretty cool. I actually like that. Remember, this one's got using normals right now. That's pretty cool. I like that. Okay? But what I want to do is, is not do that. I don't want it to be in the normal, so I'm going to put this to zero. Okay? And then I'm going to say only on the shadows and only on the shadows that are on the ground. So now I see those shadows are pure black now, right? So, and then you can clip them different ways, right? So this is having other clipping options, right, through here. So I'm gonna say, I just only clipping I want is to the background and on this, so now those shadows are pure black, right? So none of that orange is coming through, okay? So, <clears throat> next thing I want to do now is make this look a little different now. You know what? I don't. I'm not a big fan of this blue. Let me. Let's go a little something a little bit, a little more in the darker blue with less. Yeah. Yeah, that's better. I like that look better. So let's go grab this blue again, holding the Alt key. Grabbing it, yeah, I like that. That's that's better for me. I'm a, I like that a lot better, a lot better. Okay, so now what I want to do is we are using different colors right now. This is using the black color, so I'm going to change this to white, right? And now that outline is white. Then I'm using this also. I'm going to change this to white, and now I have that. And in fact, I don't want the inner shadows happening there, okay? And I also, maybe maybe I don't even like the shadows. Maybe I don't even want shadows in this anymore, right? Do I really want shadows? Mm, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I do right now, okay? And I gotta go with the filters that is affecting, right? Ooh, I like, uh-huh, I like that. Okay, I like that better. Okay, there's that. There's that. That. And that, right? So what I'm going to do now is I don't like what's happening with the shadows. So I'm just going to turn them off. Right? So I'm just going to turn off shadows. Okay, and then re-render. So I have no shadows. I don't want any shadows. I want that. That's what I'm looking for. Right, so now we're starting to get that look. All right, here, and now I wanna keep pushing this element. So, <clears throat> I've now got filters here where I got filters here and there, so you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take this filter and I'm gonna cut it, come to here, and then paste it. Because I wanna stay in this order. Because now the next thing I wanna do is I wanna affect the background. So you can see the background's being affected. And instead of it being dots, we can be squares, right? And then let's change the squares here. Let's look at maybe, yeah, we want inner transparency. And let's say, oops, let's make something more oops, like this. Maybe not that much. Yeah, something more like that, 
right? And then now I want to find the right size that maybe I want. Maybe something like that, right? And what I'm doing is I now my background is getting like this squared pattern look to it. And I'm going to drop the opacity so it's not so strong. I'm going to make it more grid. So let's say 45, uh, 30. Now I'm just playing guessing game. And welcome to rendering. That's what rendering is. Yeah. There we go. I like, I like the 39. Okay. And then now I want to do something else. Okay. So I'm going to say, let's throw this on. Okay. But instead of paint, let's do something else. Let's do a vignette. Right? So that vignette, I don't need the shadows. It's only in the background. Right? And then if you go, I can start adding a vignette. And then there you go. See, it's starting to pop a lot more. And then giving that. So there you go. I've got now something that looks a lot like blueprints. Right? And then the beauty is we're 3D. And at any point in time, if I want to swap this out, Right, and then do the opposite where I want a black and white image again, right? It's just selecting the colors. So then I'd probably do is have like this, right? This color here, right? This paint color, you're just swapping it out. So now I just say, now I want white again, right? And then this is gotta go, we'll make this not be red. We'll make this be black, right? And then this has gotta be white again Right, and then now this filter, I'm just gonna switch it to the black. And then this filter, right? This is, that ain't giving me much of anything anymore right now. And then here's my grid, right? So then this, what do I want this grid to be? Right, and now it looks like I probably would change to something more like that. And like that, boom, we got another type of render going on it's, it's this is awesome it's so much fun i love doing this this when we started making this uh i know uh there's mixed feelings but i really love taking models especially hard surface stuff and start messing around with this in zbrush and getting renders like this right and then now i got various different types of rendering right so this is our goal is i'm trying to make something here right i'm trying to do this where I don't even want a vignette, right? I'm trying to get to this, right? Going back to, we are trying to replicate this world, right? Let me see the camera like this, something like exactly like this, right? Or something like that, right? So you can even see in that image I just showed you guys, especially for the Ghostbuster card, the background was a different, a little bit different color. It wasn't white, right? So you can come here to the white and then pick maybe a different color you want for the background. And maybe you do want, I don't know, maybe you just turn it off and get back to that orange. So I just needed some hydration. Nerb, too, thanks for staying up. How late is it for you? It's super late. Okay, that's it, guys. That's that's getting us to the point that we want to start getting to, right? And then I'm gonna finish this off this week, my model, and then we're gonna I'm gonna start making some interior pieces and showing you how I would in essence do what this book is doing, where it's got the car, but then there's some internal parts being exposed. So I'm gonna start modeling some stuff internally for my ship and then cut it out so that you can see the internal parts. I'm going to start having some fun with that. And there was a question long ago that as someone said, asked me and I forgot to answer after the major tangents we went on. Okay. So this is a Lisa needs braces moment. People Lisa needs braces moment. Now, when you're going to do this, someone asked, okay, Paul, can I just now just go double my document or triple my document? No, I no, because the filtering system it's also pixel based. So if you go change your document size, you're changing your pixels. So that's not going to help. 
right? You got to, when you're going to do this, you will have to do this at the actual size that you want to make, right? So normally, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll use this AA half and it just gives me that an extra anti-alias and see how much better that image looks now. I like that a lot, right? So what I will normally do is come here to my document and say, hey, I want to get something, I don't know, I want my, my end result image, I want to be 3,000 pixels by 2,000 pixels. So then I would say here, I would do 6,000 pixels by 4,000 pixels. Okay, I'm gonna resize. Would you like resize drawing? Yes. Okay, control N that. I'm gonna zoom way out, way out like that, right? Redraw this out. Put myself in edit mode. And now I need another view. Okay, uh, let's go with, uh, let's see. What kind of view do I want? Let's just kill live booleans uh, for a minute just for sake of my computer is now. Because the bigger document you go, people, the more ZBrush has got to render all those pixels, okay? So then I would do this, and then I would do an AA half, right? And then render that out. Okay, and then of course, this is gonna take a lot longer to render, okay, because it's pixels. So what I've done, I've, I've gone 6,000 pixels by 4,000 pixels, but the minute I hit that AA half, we cut the document in half, and then we throw any anti-aliasing on everything. And then, so there you go. This is what I would do if I'm really trying to get to a final render. But then, you know, you're, you're using filters, so you can turn them on, right? And then now here, I'll zoom out of, Right, so you can still turn the filters and it's all, the filters, what's nice, it's real time. So it's gonna be a lot faster. I don't have to sit there and re-render, right? I really liked that blue that we did. This was, this was cool. That was cool, that looks cool, right? So now if I go actual, there's what it looks like. And then AA half, that's what AA half is gonna look like. Okay, so that's personally what I would do. The book name for this, hold on, Ghostbusters Ecto Mobile. So it's got a bunch of stuff in here, but in essence, this is what I. This is the whole point of this stream is I'm re trying to recreate what's on this book. It has, it's a fun book. I actually, I actually modeled a, the, the most recent Ghostbuster figures that came out of Hasbro. I actually did the proton pack on them. So. I should actually probably put that up. I totally forgot about that. Right, so this is cool and it's got all this. This is, in essence, what I'm showing you guys is I kind of want to use ZBrush to do what's in this book, right? And I have, an, I have another one, right, that's like this as well. Uh, here's another good one. Horrible movie, but a, a really cool book. A very good book. It's really cool. And so this is Superman, uh, Batman versus Superman. Not a good movie. But it's got a lot of great shots, because they got a lot of cool stuff in there. But the movie was just, uh, I don't know what they're doing with the series. They're killing it right now, right? And so, it's like this is the, right? Getting a render like that in ZBrush, we could do that. No problem. You can get a render like that in ZBrush. Right, and then that's in essence the goal. I'm trying to make something that, you know, it's giving the conceptual understanding. Here, I'm trying to find something else. Right, and get people to understand what it is I'm making, and then I'm just throwing a twist on it and making it look like a tech manual, right? Doing stuff like that too. Could be things that we could look into, right? So another really good book, this is called Batman versus Superman, Dawn of Justice Tech Manual. So I'll leave it up there for a second on camera. Is it blurry or are you guys able to read it? I'm, assuming, I'm hoping you guys can read it. I've got a ton, guys, I've got a, I've got so many books. I'm telling you right now, one of the best books ever to purchase is this book. Hold on. And right now, right now it's pretty cheap. This is probably, if you want to do hard surface, this is a must purchase book for me. Like if someone asked me, Paul, 
for Hard Surface, what books would you recommend? There's about five books that I would spit out of my mouth, and I have all five of them with me. This is the first one I start with. Okay? So this is the Star Wars blueprints. So in essence, that, we can make this happen now inside of ZBrush. This render, like that, I can make that happen now in ZBrush with the system that we were talking about. This book's oversized, but it's amazing. It's got all the original drawings um, and specs of all the first six Star Wars episodes. Right? It's so like, look, there's R2-D2. Right? The original drawings are in this book. And the guy that made the book worked on all the, the original three films. And the information he put in the... It's just so... I'm such a huge movie buff that there's just so much interesting things that happen to them making the film, obviously. Like, look how big this is. This is a fold-out of the X-Wing. I can't even see... I can't see my... Can I gotta stand up because I can't see. Right? Like, look how big this is. This is awesome. I can't even... I can't even show the whole thing. Right? This is such a good book. Right now on Amazon US, it's $91. Okay, to give you an idea, the last time I looked at this book, I would say about, I'd say five months ago, it was like $400 for this book. This book's pricing fluctuates. And for those environment people, there's environment stuff as well. And it, it's got everything. So every single, the, the at, at is in here, the AT at's in here. There's even a page where it's like an entire four page pullout of like a droid it's got all the design elements that guys i'm telling you, this book is amazing i i love this book and you know i've been lucky enough in my career to get a chance to work on some star wars stuff so it's been a lot of fun and i've had the love I've, I've been able to pull this book out and go bingo this is awesome i'm trying to see if i can find the really quickly the image that shows the four page pullout of the droids I showed you R2-D2. Like, see, there's the, there's the side view of R2-D2, the profile view. Right? And then, where's the one? I, I just gotta, I gotta see if I can find this real quick. I, I know some of you want to go to bed. I don't know if I, I don't know if I can find it real quick. I don't know where it is in the book. But it's pretty awesome. I'm telling you. Number one, if you're a Star Wars fan, you need this book. Number two... If you really want to get into hard surface environments and it, they put everything in this book, it's awesome. Uh, I don't know where it is. I should probably make a bookmark for it. Oh yeah, there's some, there's the the Millennium Falcon too. This is a interesting thing. It here's here this here's I'll show you this right. We all know what the Millennium Falcon looks like, right? Like we all get it. We all know like the original actual Millennium Falcon was this. So it was more like Princess Leia's ship. Right, because he talks about it in the book. Like that was the original, and they called it the pirate ship. And they built this page is talking about they started to build the set, right, the movie set, and they were building it based on the original design. And that the original one was a lot longer, where the Millennium Falcon is obviously more round. And they ran into they're like, what are we gonna do, man? There's no way now we can fit the new pirate ship, i.e., now the new Millennium Falcon in this set. So they had to do some really cool camera work and like build it differently to get that across. It's, it's, that's why I love that book. It's just so much fun. I digress. Yes, it's called Star Wars Blueprints. The Blueprints. There's a gold version one. Don't get that one. All it is, is the, as far as I know, is the cover's just gold. It's not worth the money. Get the one I had that has the white cover. There's a ton of great ZBrush books on the market. There's so many now. Um, I wrote one. I was involved in a bunch of one. I wrote one that's called ZBrush uh, Tips and Techniques, Tips and Tricks, in essence. It's out of print, but you can still get it used. Um, 3D Total's done a lot of really great books for ZBrush. There's a lot of really good books. I, it would take me time to go try and find them all. Well, that's it. I don't have anything else today. So there you go. So my goal here for my next stream that I'm looking at this sci-fi ship. I'm going to have the whole thing done details wise, have some internal pieces made and then show you guys how I would go about showing that off in my render. All right. So before I go, let me make sure I didn't lose any questions here. Um, 
Does anybody have any questions that maybe I missed before I call this a Dunsky and we finish the stream on? Cross hatching, okay, Andres, do you mean cross hashing, like drawing like pen kind of thing? Do you mean something like that? Or do you mean just, just having crackers? Because you could do that. It's just, here, let me, let me, let's, let's resize this. Because don't forget, here, I'm going to say new document. No, let's redraw this guy out. Right, because there's stuff that already exists for you guys. So here, we can do this. Right, I'm just going to render this out now like this. And then I'm gonna go, actually, we don't need this. I'm gonna go this, I'm gonna go to the filters, okay? And, you know, you got stuff, you just double click. Like, you guys don't have to even make them if you want. A lot of them already exist. Right, unfortunately, here, let's see, if I got, there we go, I can get to it. So this way, I can just cycle through them and go, okay, I want, I like that one, I like that one. Give it kind of sketch look. Here's random sketch. Chromatic aberration. Right? There's a good one. There's a dark ink one. Because we have the ability to make the lines wiggle, in essence. Yeah, who wouldn't want lime green? Here's a heavy stroke one. Here's a line art one that's just pretty much straight line art. There's another one, right? Boom. I, like, I can just load that and we're good to go. That's in essence what I was trying to create in front of you guys. And it just, I created a different version. Right? You just double click. Here's one that looks like it's on paper. Doodling. Right? There's one that's trying to make it look like a painting. Color is important for this one. There's some kind of pattern. Here's a different pattern. Here's the one that kind of looks like a sketching. More sketching. Right? So there's all this possibility. Pencil on paper. Try and make it look more like a pencil drawing. Here's pixel art. Go back to those that 80s, 8-pick. Eight, eight Here's a sketchy. Here's a different sketch. There's just pixel. There's so much like presets in here. Here's painting, but this one relies on color. Like you, if you have color on it, this snaps big time. Same thing with this. This is watercolor. And then here's ink. This is uh, Z Long uses that for a lot of his. Here's from for like watercolor. So you guys can just double click right there. What's the quickest way to delete inner shells? So well there's two ways to do that. So you can either use Dynamesh or use Live Boolean. Right? So if I have say a cube right and then I have let's insert something real quick. I need to stop using the mouse. I hate using the mouse. And then say, do something like this, right? So that's intersecting. So, but there's really internal geometry in there, right? So you can either use Dynamesh, which the rule is to have water tight and no internal geometry. So now there's no inner geometry in there at all. Okay, that's one way. Or you, or we could just take this, right? Even if it's all the same polygroup. Here, click W key, click this gear, and just hit remesh by union. And then there you go. You can do that too, and now there's no internal geometry as well. I use this one a lot. I use that. And then Graham, to, to the presets, yeah, you're just loading presets, right? So when you render out, right, it's loading, see the filters up. So when I go into here and I load something, say like this, See, there's your filters. This is being used. There's seven filters, right? So you can just come in here and turn filters on and off and see what it does and doesn't do, right? So if we go back to my model and do something like this, and we render that out, right? So that's what I have. But all these filters here are in here. I can turn them off, on. You can just even see what they're doing on your model. Okay, I want I want that one on. Okay, do I maybe I don't want that one on. Give it a nice gray tone. And maybe I don't want that one on anymore. Right, and there you go. And then now obviously you can adjust 
all the settings in here and change the colors up if you want to, right? This one's right now using black, you know? So I want red, maybe I want a blue. I don't know, it's, it's your world, man. It's your world. It's whatever you want. Whatever you want. Maybe make it more pencil. Right, and then make it start getting thicker. Right, so now you see I'm starting to break it up. It's giving like a pencil -y, starting to give like, I was working with a pencil. Right, and there is a couple filters that have a ton of settings. We just, we don't have time. I was trying to just get to a end result with you guys, but there are a couple filters in here that have a boatload of stuff that you can do in them. Um, so let me see if I can pull one up real quick here. Uh, let's screen dots. No, it's not screen dots. Uh, okay, hold on. I'm going, there you go. There you go. Look at all the settings for this one. So this is over paint color. Like, look at all the stuff you can do. You can do fake drop shadows. This is the cubes, right? You can play with the heights, like the width. There's so many things you can do with this, right? And then I'll maybe, I don't want it so, so much opacity. Maybe I only want it on the model. Maybe I only want it in the background, right? Maybe I want to make sure it's not in the shadows. Stay out of the shadow. Stay out of the shadows. And then this will change the sizing of them. Yeah, look at that. See, now it's got kind of like a screen feel, right? And the fact that it's going across everything, it starts breaking things up for me, right? And then I can say, let's throw another filter on that. You know, red. I don't need red. Who needs red? I'm going to throw a displacement filter on it. Look what that does. The displacement's a lot of fun. Right, and then now if you go lower, it won't displace as much, but it'll give a little bit of squiggliness, right? And then now you can really make something look very, very different with just this filter alone, right? Uh, it's a lot of fun, I'm telling you people. You should be enjoying this, and then I can change the radius of this a little bit as well, right? How much opacity do I want on this? It is awesome, the things that you're gonna be able to do. So, there you go. So now the lines are getting, see they're getting wiggly. They're not, it's not perfectly straight. So that's what gives a little bit more feeling like it was done by like a hand, right? And not so computer generated, right? So I can just keep playing with this slider and it's gonna get more and more like displaced. See, like look how wobbly that is. Right, that's too much. So I'm gonna go 22. Okay, still a little too much for me. 20, too much. Their 18's working for me. Right, and just like that, this is starting to look very different right out the gate, right? A new book, It's Your World, man. That'd be awesome. <laughs> or Lisa needs braces. I probably couldn't do something like that because obviously it's The Simpsons, right? So there you go. Uh, Mike May, what was your question about having shadows having an outline? You can do that. In fact, I know there are some pre-made filters that is already doing that. I just don't remember which ones it is again. I know I did that because I made it so I wanted my outline shadows to have their own thing. And I believe I have shadows turned off right now. Yeah, I have shadows turned off. I know there's a preset that has outlining shadows. So you just have to try and find it. I don't remember which one it is now, but I know there is one. Like this one's cool. I like that one. There's a whole bunch here, man. There's so many that we made. And also the beta testers, a bunch of these are from us, a bunch of them are beta testers. There's a lot of different ones.
but it is possible. There's a setting you can tell it to do shadows um, on the out, and have it be on the outside only. Because I know it's there because I actually requested it when we were developing. So I just don't know what preset has it. Uh, Paul, I sometimes have problems getting a matcap lights color to show in my renders. Mm, what do you mean uh, by that? Uh, it looks white a lot of the time, no matter how much I uh, up the saturation. Well, matcap lights, lighting's baked into the matcap. So if you're talking about using the lights, um, nothing's going to happen with the lights. The lights aren't going to be used on a matcap material. So if you're using a madcap material, like a, a matcap material, um, yeah, I don't know, I guess we can go with this one, right? There's different settings for this now, right? So if we go into the material palette, okay, and go to modifiers, you've got all these controls in here, right? So number one, orientation, that's dealing with the actual lighting. So see, it's moving the light around in the mat cap. So you have that ability. Okay, and then this one has two spheres, right? There's a sphere A and a sphere B. So the sphere on the left is A, the sphere on the right is B. So in essence, if I come here to intensity A, right, I'm making the intensity of A a lot higher, and then B as well. So you could turn this off and play with the intensity sliders here, and then you have your saturations here as well, and then you, here's your hue, you can change the color if you want to, but this is all the settings that there is, like whatever the matte cap material is, like if you go like something like here, really shiny like this, right, it's there, okay, that shininess is there, maybe what you might want to do is if you were doing something like this, I might come here and crank down the distance, so that shininess is very different now. So you can actually see the squared lighting. There's nothing you adjust because whatever's in this material attribute for madcaps, that's what we're giving you. So the only things you're gonna have is like this, doing like intensities. But that's intensifying the whole thing, right? I can get rid of having no cavity, right? And then you have an intensity A, so that'll help with that too. See, that's going to crank up, see, overall. So you might want to try that and see from whatever you've been playing with. Hopefully that helps. Now I got a super shiny ship. Uh. Now, look, it's shiny with all the rendering now with it. Um, by the way, for a rim light, the, on a Mac cap material, the best thing is to do, like grab this, right? I can throw an orange, and now if you throw up colorize, right, that'll actually colorize some things for you too. So you can do, you can do that as well, to throw a little bit of color, to colorize the whole, whole mesh itself as well, is a way to mess with that. So it could be something you could do. Right, that's something else. And then when you're making a madcap, yeah, you could throw a rim on that would be the best thing to do. But this is something else that you can also do, is grab the color. Uh, hold on, let me catch up. Uh, Master Man movies. Oh, useful idiot. You liked the Batman versus Superman. Listen, I'm a huge Superman fan. I got a Superman here in the corner. I got a whole Superman corner. I, I just, it was bad. Like, it doesn't hold up for me. Uh, you know, it's fun still watching them, but it was bad. The resetting the lighting, there is no reset of lighting. So we don't have a reset button of all your lights. The best thing to do, honestly, if you're going to, you know, you start using ZBrush lighting, what I do is I save out the default lighting. So I save it, and then same thing the light caps, I save out a default lighting. And that'll, in essence, wipe it out, and I can load and open the default lighting. But we don't have any reset button for the lights. Probably something we should add. You can paint a one-to-one -one image and then use it as a texture for mad caps. Yeah, yeah, you can use a texture for mad caps, a hundred percent. Yeah, 
In fact, I can take this madcap that we're that I'm looking at right now, and all it is is this image. So we just talked about this on Tuesday, actually. If you want to go watch my Tuesday stream, we dove into this. Like I can I can load this and just grab this, and then there you go. This is now you can see the material has this as the material. You can grab anything. You can grab any image. You can go crazy. But we covered this already in my stream on Tuesday. Like this is chrome out, man. Chromed out. I'd probably drop the intensity for this one. Throw some cavity in that. And then right now I've got this distance turned down quite a bit. So I'd probably put this back up a little bit more. <laughs> it's nuts. Okay, so that's it we'll call it a stream thank you for joining hopefully you guys took away a lot um my next stream on the ship you know i'll, I'll have it i'll have it done <laughs> and we'll get into looking at how now the last step would be if i'm making internal pieces what is a cool way to start showing some of those internal piece stuff off okay so thank you for joining me it's been a blast i've had a good time uh Again, if you guys really want to get a hold of me for anything, the best thing to go is go to ZBrush Central, right? So this is your your ZBrush Central. And then I'm Pixo Paul. So if you do an at Pixo Paul, right? So I'll put it in the chat. I'm going to get an email, right? That says, hey, you just commented me on ZBrush Central. So if you just put anytime you're posting on ZBrush Central, you put an at that Pixo Paul. I'm going to get an email in my Pixelogic email address and then I'll click on it and go and see what you've been doing in the thread. I really wish some of you people would take the challenge that I've been doing for this stream. I've only seen one person take the challenge and try making your own ship and follow along these streams and do what I'm doing in my streams and get to a final product. So I'm going to take off. I got to get my lunch for myself. Have a delicious day. I appreciate you all joining me it's been a lot of fun <clears throat> i'm gonna finish this off i'm gonna start working on this ac actually after my lunch some more because i want to get it finished let me know if you need anything you got the at pixel paul enjoy the fat albert impression impersonation thanks hey, 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 hey. right so have a delicious day paul is 